Hey everybody, welcome to Time Capsule here on the Games Done Quick Twitch channel, the show where we travel back in time to your favorite years in gaming and speedrun our way through popular or influential games during the time of their release. I am your host, Smooth Operative. Thank you for joining us. Tonight we are revisiting the year 2014 with speedruns of Dark Souls 2 and later Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, two games that I'm sure some of you have very strong feelings about. But before we get into the games, let's get into those announcements. First of all, if you are watching this episode of Time Capsule on YouTube from the future and would like to support our live content, please consider checking out our Twitch channel. That's at twitch.tv slash games done quick. Hello again to everyone currently watching live. And if you have an Amazon Prime account, did you know that you can subscribe to any Twitch channel of your choice every month for free? If you enjoy the shows, please consider using your Prime Gaming account to support your weekly GDQ Hotfix content. <laughs> Next up, our all-women speedrunning event, Frame Fatales, returns with another event that is Fleet Fatales online this Sunday, November 15th through the 21st. Go to gamesdonequick.com slash framefatales for more information on that and get hyped because it is coming up fast. West Coast Weekend will take place December 4th through December 6th. The schedule will be released on November 20th for that, so keep your eyes peeled for the games list. And lastly, HDQ 2021 Online will be held January 3rd through January 10th, 2021, and the schedule for that is out. Prize submissions are now open until December 26th, so more information on that can also be found on our website, of course, www.gamestonequick.com. Now, let's round up the games, the runners, the commentators for this episode of Time Capsule 2014 Volume 2. I have here with me Call Me Zero, ready to speedrun Dark Souls 2. Zero, would you like to introduce yourself and your commentator for the evening? Hey everyone, uh, I'm Zero, and uh, this is Dark Souls 2 Any% Current Patch, which is the newer uh, Any% version, I suppose, where a lot of stuff is patched. So it's kind of more boring, to be honest, uh, <laughs> uh, with me is one of my good friends who has never done a speedrun in her life, uh, Apollo Lol. What's up, Apollo? Hi. Hello. Did you like that introduction? <laughs> it was good. Okay. All right. So we're starting in five, four, three, two, one, go. Good luck. My controller disconnected. That was unfortunate. Oh no. Th things that have never happened before in a mirror. <laughs> Don't All right, sweat so it. We, uh, yeah, it's fine. I hope it doesn't disconnect again though. So uh, we start with the run. Uh, we go naked and we two hand or left hand. So um, in Dark Souls 2, <clears throat> when you take off your inventory, uh, you, uh, uh, take, you uh, spend or cost less stamina to run. And if you have stuff uh, on, like a weapon or stuff, so it, it will take more. I'm gonna name my character here. Uh, after one of my good friends. <laughs> I'm gonna choose my character to be uh, Explorer and my uh, gift to be a Bonfire Ascetic. So once again, I'm gonna take off all my clothes and the ring and the weapon. So, a few things to mention. Um, <clears throat> Two-handing my left hand, uh, basically what it does is it, make, it makes me pick up items faster and open doors faster if you're two-handing your left hand. Um, and I chose my class to be Explorer because it gives us the stats that we want and also gives us a lot of consumables that we will need, like life gems and uh, magic bombs and uh, magic uh, resin on your sword or weapon. And uh, <clears throat> uh, the gift I chose is Bonfire Aesthetic, which I'll go a bit later on on why we need three, three of them in the entire run. So uh, this is Majula, and I'm about to meet up with a merchant who we're going to kill. Uh, we pretty wow. much kill every NPC in this run because we want their souls and we're really greedy. So this is Malin, we say hi to him, and then we kill him by throwing uh, four magic bombs at his head. Um, every magic bomb that hits his head will do additional damage. So if you get four headshots, you will die. If you miss one of the headshots, you need a fifth bomb, uh, which takes more time. You lose like two or three seconds. So the reason why we killed him is because his armor set um, is very important uh, because uh, it gives you more souls when you kill someone, basically. And we need a lot of souls in this run. So I picked up uh, a little thing there. I'm gonna talk to the Herald one time so she can give us an SS flask. And then I'm gonna light this bonfire so I can uh, bone back to it a bit later or, or teleport to it a bit later. So, 
Um, bonfire aesthetics. Basically, what they do is if you, if you play any Souls One game before, you realize that when you finish the game, you can go to New Game Plus. So bonfire aesthetic essentially does that. If you burn out a bonfire, it will turn that area into New Game Plus, and if you killed any boss, you can kill them again. Um, and the reason why we need them is because uh, in this run, we kill a certain boss four different times, the same as run. And the reason why is because uh, we have a door in the game, and to access that door, you have to kill the four main lords, or you have to have one million souls. So getting a million souls is much faster, because we use uh, three bonfire aesthetics and kill the same boss uh, four times. And when we end, uh, when we kill all, uh, when we kill him four times, he gives us enough souls that we have one million, basically. So that's why you need the bonfire aesthetics. I have one as my gift, and I'm going to be picking up two more. Uh, a few things to mention. Um, so this is Forest of Fallen Giants. I forgot to mention uh, the auto run thing, which is what I do to uh, to do the menuing. So basically, uh, this is the only game where you need to use the keyboard to actually do auto run. So. Um, if you're running with a controller only and you try to um, and you try to open the inventory, your character is going to stand still. So you have to use Steam configuration to make a certain button in your controller press space or a key, uh, a, a key on the keyboard, which lets you do auto run. That's how I can do the menuing as I'm running, but otherwise I can't be able to do it. So we have to use a keyboard. So yeah, this is uh, Forest of Fallen Giants. Uh, since we need 1 million souls, I'm going to be doing some random pickups in the entire run. And uh, basically when you get the 1 million soul mark, it's actually very specific. Like, it's not like 1 million and like 10,000. It's like 1 million and like 100, basically. So yeah. So this is the Force of the Fallen Giants uh, bonfire. I'm going to talk to the uh, merchant. And as I talk to her, I'm going to pop uh, an SS flask. I'm going to buy the axe and a magic bomb. Sorry, a, a, a fire bomb. This guy's blocking my way. I'm going to equip the bomb. Run to this wall and do a little skip here or trick. So that's called bomb wall. So basically, nice. if you stand right there and throw the bomb, it will clip through the wall and it will blow up the oil barrels uh, that are behind that wall. And uh, basically, you skip a big chunk of, of the area by doing that. So here we have a, a fog gate. And the thing in fog gates in this game is they made them really unfun. Um, instead of having iframes instantly, you actually have to, you, it takes you like five minutes to enter one. And if anyone hits you, it will cancel the animation. So because of that, a lot of areas with fog gates, uh, your one can instantly die. So yeah, thankfully I didn't get hit there. And I'm gonna jump on the elevator, drink the Essence Flask, pop the soul, take out the weapon, use the magic um, present on it, and then start auto running, two hand my uh, axe, equip the, ar the armor set, because when I kill this boss, uh, I need to get the additional souls. So uh, this boss has a very specific move set. You first hit his right leg four times, and then he's gonna do another attack. You hit his left leg three times. Now he's gonna try to stomp you. Please don't jump, thank you. We throw the magic bomb, we hit him four times. He's gonna rip his hand, because I got him under the move set. Throw another bomb, and then take out the, uh, bo uh, the homeward bone. We kill him, and then we warp back. So the move set that is, that there is very specific. Yeah, that was very easy. Um, so the reason why I throw the, the bombs is because I don't have any stamina. So instead of just uh, instead of just uh, standing still for five hours, I will just throw the magic bombs since I have no stamina. And, and you know, when the animation is over, um, I'll have the full stamina back. So uh, after we kill them, we buy um, the uh, blacksmith store key and we buy three bright bugs. Um, and then we also talk to the, uh, we talk to her enough to exhaust her dialogue, which will make her give us a ring that gives us more souls. And then she will warp back to Majula, which is like the starting area, basically. And when, when, and when she goes back there, she'll have three more bright bugs. Um, a bright bug is an item that has been added a bit later on into the game from a patch. And basically what it does is it, it lets you take less damage and it makes you deal even more damage. And in, in, in this certain category slash route, we use six bright bugs. Okay, so this is the Pursuer. Uh, he dies very easy because we do a little uh, trick here. We bait him and then we use the uh, arrow thingy and he dies. Man, and I was so shocked this. when I found out you could kill him with the Ballista. Yeah. It's very easy. Um, <laughs> so He's after so we cool. kill him, we equip uh, the Soul Ring to get the additional souls. And then we, uh, <clears throat> we equip the uh, Bright Bugs. And then after we kill him, he gives us a ring called the Ring of Blades, which increases your physical damage, which we also need. We, 
the, the rings in this game are very important, or this category at least. Dark Souls 2 is the best Souls like. Yeah. Wait, what? Okay, so we're back in Medulla. Uh, the Herald's positioning here is actually RNG, and she gave us the best position. I'm gonna open the blacksmith store with the key that I bought from the merchant back in force. Uh, I'm gonna talk to the Herald for the second time. Rest of the bonfire, so the, so the uh, blacksmith will be will spawn again in the, inside the store. He can sell us stuff. And then I'm gonna talk to the Herald for the third time, and now I'm gonna level up. I'm gonna level my endurance to 10 and my dexterity to 12. The reason why I take it to 12 is because I'm gonna buy a weapon called the Rapier, and you have to have at least 12 decks to be able to actually use it. So, we enter the store, we pick up the short bow from here, and then we talk to the blacksmith. I'm gonna pop the salt as I talk to him. Uh, I'm gonna buy the rapier, 11 arrows, and six titanate shards, and then I'm gonna upgrade my rapier to plus three with the shards that I just bought. I'm gonna order one again, equip the rapier, the bow, and the arrows. And now I'm gonna talk to the other merchant who is a cat. So this is the cat, we talked to her, she uh, mentioned that we're undead. I'm gonna buy the cat ring, which lets us take less fall damage, two homeward bones, and four alluring skulls. I'm gonna equip the cat ring, which will let me take less fall damage and survive this, drink the Estus Flask, and then use a life gem as I'm falling off. So a thing to mention in this, oh wait, look. Okay, so this I fall down scary. here, roll down here, and then stand still right here, do an R2, fall on this, and then roll here again, nice, okay. <clears throat> so, I think to mention this game is you actually don't use the SS Flask as much because when you start the game, you only have one SS Flask. And the SS Flasks are really bad in this game because the animation takes like five years just to lift the cup and then five years just to drink it. So we use uh, but we use the Life Gems instead, which heal nearly the same amount and are much quicker to use. And we also start with a big chunk of them because we have the Explorer uh, class. So here I'm going to be doing some attacks because in this game we have something called Super momentum where if you if you fall you can actually just die because you get like you get this like insane super momentum so this is the gutter i'm gonna run right here fall down here so we want to be real careful here because uh if we do any wrong movement i'm just gonna die so yeah we don't want that to happen and it's not gonna happen i think i will right, make so fun of you if you die I'm gonna love up this life tip because I'm really scared because if I die here, <laughs> technically I can't actually come back because I, I broke one of the wooden planks as I was falling down uh, the pit with this specific movement and whatnot. So I actually can't back, I can't actually come back here unless I use um, a save file. So yeah, I'm gonna pop a life tip here to not get super momentum, roll, and then run, jump, and fall on these urns so I can take less fall damage and then pick up the fragment branch of your. I think that's how you pronounce it, which basically uh, what it does is there are certain enemy uh, NPCs in the game that are like uh, stoned, not the fun kind of stone, the other stoned, and uh, basically you use the item to uh, make them unstoned. I don't know. So yeah, I'm going to use the bright bug here. As you can see, the animation is very long, so I used it after I exhausted my entire stamina. I forgot to talk about stamina management completely, by the way. Uh, <laughs> So the thing about stamina in this game is when you start running, you want to stop running before your stamina ends. Because if it, if you if you run and you exhaust your entire stamina, you actually can't run again until your stamina is full. So you, you essentially use your stamina until you have like just a little bit of it left, and then you stop. So yeah, I, I, I lit that bonfire because I need to come back to it. I'm gonna use the uh, magic resin here, and we get into the fight. So uh, this boss is called Run, and you guys need to remember him because we're going to be fighting him four different times, which is super fun. So if you hit one of his hands uh, five times, he can you can actually chop off his arm, and he will be in denial, basically, because he'll, he'll still think that he has his arm, so he'll still try to hit you with it, which basically uh, it makes you save a lot of time. But yeah, uh, depending on the attacks that he gives you, you can not really get lucky. So as you can see, I managed to hit his uh, arm only... Uh, three times. He's not really giving me attacks where I can hit his arm and now he's going to explode, which is a really bad attack because you have to run away from him. Yeah, as you can see, this fight is pretty easy. And he's dead. Nice. nice. So after he dies, equip the armor set quickly so we can get the additional souls and we get 17 key souls. Alright, now I'm going to unequip the armor set so I can run faster or consume less stamina. I'm going to do a little jump here. And now we're going to go. Peace out. So, <clears throat> a thing to mention, uh, we're going to the DLC, which a lot of people might question why you're going to the DLC if you're 
you know, playing an any percent category. So the reason why is because I forgot what the route was. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, the, so the extra reason is because uh, we want to pick up a bonfire aesthetic, which we find here, a few souls, uh, and a ring called the Flynn Ring, which is a very strong ring that uh, that allows us to, to, to do a lot of damage, basically. So yeah. I actually never Anyways, completed this DLC. I got so lost. Fun fact, I, I have like 500 hours in this game, and I never finished any of the DLCs. <laughs> Yeah, uh, like I, I tried to do a playthrough of it. I was like, okay, let's let's finish the DLCs, and then I was like, okay, I hate this game too much. I can only speed on this game. I can't actually play it. There are so some really stopped. good bosses, though. Yeah, it's true, true. But the best bosses are the are the DLCs, apparently. Yeah, that's honestly perfect. <clears throat> so uh, I, I was supposed to do a little jump here, uh, where I save five seconds, but I didn't do it because I'm well. To be honest, I'm pretty scared. So the jump only saves five seconds, and if I miss it, I lose like one minute. So it's not really worth doing in a marathon. So I, I lit that bonfire, which is what, what you're not supposed to do actually, but I'm gonna light pretty much every bonfire in this one because, um, well, I'm doing a marathon one, so I don't wanna, you know, make a little mistake and then die. So yeah, uh, you wanna shoot the switch there or you wanna just go for the jump, but I'm not really good at doing the jump to be honest. So I always shoot the switch and then try to go for the jump. I missed it, so it was fun. It's not the end of the world. It saves like five seconds, I think. So yeah, here's uh, you have a little bit of a scary movement right here. So you're walking on this bridge, and then you want to do a little jump right here, and then you equip your armor set quickly. And then uh, the reason why you equip the armor set there is because the the dragon kills all those NPCs or enemies, and you want to get the additional souls from them. And now you pop the souls as you're waiting for these doors to open. A weird fact is, I play the game on the lowest graphics. Uh, stuff because I don't want to drop any F FPS, but you want to have your texture uh, graphics on the highest because for some reason these uh, doors in the DLC actually open faster if you have your uh, texture graphics on high. So yeah, uh, as you can see, I have to shoot that switch of that big door three times, and I shoot this other switch because we want to pick up a soul of a great hero, which gives us 20k, I think. I'm not sure. I don't even know anymore. Uh, so yeah. So, we get inside this room, and I'm going to use the Alluring Skull. I mean, the name pretty much gives it away of what it does, but all these enemies are going to see the Alluring Skull, and they're going to go to it. I want to open up this chest, which is going to have a trap, and it's the crossbow. I'm going to stand right here. So, if you get hit by one of them, you kind of might die. So, yeah. So, uh, I lit the bonfire, because even though it's really hard to die here, the enemies do a lot of damage, because you're pretty much under-leveled. So, we don't, even, we don't really want to risk it. So yeah, you, uh, I equipped the uh, soul in my inventory, and now I'm climbing this ladder. I'm going to pick up the Flynn Ring, which is in a chest right here, and then I'm going to leave the DLC area. <laughs> Alright, so we pick up the Flynn Ring, and then we warp back. So the reason why you don't want to light the bonfire in the DLC is because when you warp back, it's going to warp you back to the, to the uh, bonfire in Rotten. Which is what you want to go with, because then you'll do a little uh, two two stones, one bird. No, wait, wait. It's two birds, one stone. Where when you get back to the Ron bonfire, you'll burn the bonfire aesthetic since you're already there, and then you are back to Majula. But yeah, I don't want to risk it. So we talk to the Herald, and then I'm gonna pop the soul. So as it pops, I'm gonna level up. I'm gonna take my vigor to 14, my endurance to 20, and my dex to 30. Nope, that's 29. I'm bad at math. All right, Math is hard. so after we level up, yeah, it is hard. Um, I'm going to equip the Flynn Wing, and then we're going to hit Mr. Merchant three times. We're going to talk to him. I'm going to upgrade my uh, rapier to plus four, and then we kill him. So yeah, I'm oh, sorry, guys. So nice. I'm I need his souls. I'm sorry, but I need his souls, okay? Oh, man. All right, so yeah, we've been about to kill a lot of NPCs in this game. Like, pretty much every NPC that we meet up with. Uh, because we need the souls, as I mentioned. Um, and we, uh, I don't really need him anymore. It sounds really harsh, but <laughs> yeah, I, I, I used him for all I wanted. I level up my uh, weapon to plus four, and then he's gonna go. I'm sorry. That's just, that's just the way life is, unfortunately. Is so, this yeah. evil play uh, here? We, yeah, it is. It is. So here we have this very uh, long running segment where nothing really happens. So that's why I was like, do we have any donations? But we don't. So. <laughs> Honestly, okay, so. um, if you do have time, uh, I would kind of like to know what got you speedrunning Dark Souls 2 in the first place. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you after I do this little thing. For sure. 
Okay, so we hit this. We hit the person that we just unstoned, which is why I picked up that item because we can't advance until she's unstoned, and then we throw the alluring skulls at her until she dies. And the reason why we want we want want her to die is because we want her souls. And then we're gonna kill Mr. Frog, and that's it. So here I have like a, a long one minute segment. So I'm sorry, Tippy. What was your question again? Uh, well, I just kind of wondered why you decided to speedrun Dark Souls 2. It sounds like it's not a game you, you are very fond of. <laughs> okay, okay. So um, I, I I went to a speedrunning event a few times, and there I, I met a lot of people from the Speed Souls community. Uh, and oh, I, at that time, I didn't really run the game at all, but I befriended a lot of them, and I really love the Speed Souls community. I have like a lot of friends in them. And so in a way, I was kind of, um, I guess, attracted to the idea of running a Souls game. The same reason why I'm also attracted to the idea of running a GTA game. Because I'm also friends with a lot of people in the GTA game. Um, so I looked at the games, and essentially the one that interested me the most was the one that I liked the least for some reason. Um, I like I like Bloodborne the most, but I, I never got interested into speedrunning it. And I like Dark Souls one as well and Dark Souls three, but I never really got the interest to speedrunning them besides this one. And I'm also running the worst category in this game as well. But yeah, <laughs> it's, it was the only one that interested me for some reason. So, yeah. Well, I think that's uh, this cool. Is, yeah, yeah, of course. So yeah, this is the Mist Forest. I forgot to do a little menuing here, so I'm gonna lose like three seconds. So we talked to this guy. Uh, this guy stalls, so we have to talk to him like 50 times until he finally decides to sell you his good stuff. So yeah, I talked to him for the fourth time, and then when you talk to him for the fifth time, you use the dark sign, and then you buy 12 gold pine resins. So, <clears throat> The dark sign, basically what it does, is essentially the exact same as Homeward Bone, except it will warp you back, but it will take all of, all of your souls away. And after we reach a point where we don't really care about our souls anymore, we're going to be using the Homeward Bone a lot. So uh, we basically went to that merchant, and uh, after, we, after we talked to him, we buy, the, we buy uh, 12 Gold Pine Resins, which take nearly all of our uh, souls. And basically what Gold Pine Resins does is it puts uh, thunder damage on your weapon. And yeah, so before we leave this uh, area, I also picked up a ring called the Red Tear Stone Ring. If you watch any Dark Souls 1 speed ones, you should be familiar with what that ring does. So essentially the ring, uh, it makes you do more damage if your health is low. Um, it's not as strong as it is in Dark Souls 1 as it is in Dark Souls 2, but we still get like 100 um, more damage per hit. Uh, which is still, you're still saving like five seconds in every boss fight. But we don't, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna use it that much. I'm only gonna use it with like two, like, I'm gonna use it with one, the four times that we fight him, or the three remaining times. And I'm gonna use him with a boss that I'm not really <laughs> comfortable fighting called the uh, Guardian Dragon, because he's uh, pretty random. But uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> this is the area that we kind of went, we kind of got into for like five seconds and then left. This is the Lost Bastille area. So we actually got here after we killed Pursuer. Uh, an owl or an eagle or a chihuahua took us here. I don't know what kind of animal it was. And uh, we come back here because we want to kill a boss, pick up a few souls, and then we want to leave. So yeah, we need one more bonfire aesthetic, which is which will we find here. So after we do all that, we pick up the bonfire aesthetic, then we warp back to the uh, um, we warp back to the. Uh, Bonfire that is in Run, and then we kill Run uh, three different times. So this fight, it has a lot of RNG based off the attacks that the enemies will give you. So he always starts off with that like smash attack, and that's the best attack that you can get. Because if, if they do that, okay, that's not, nope, that is really bad. Uh, that attack, you can hit them four times, basically. So yeah, okay, okay, that's not bad. This attack, you can hit them three times, what are you gonna do now? Okay, that's fine as well. Okay, that's not good. Ooh, so yeah, scary. you want to kill them as fast as you can because um, you don't want to fight two of them at the same time, which is pretty much the entire difficult aspect of this fight, I suppose. But yeah, that was a decent fight. I'm going to equip the armor set really quickly, and I'm going to unequip the uh, cat ring and equip the red Storm ring instead, which I'm going to be using for uh, the upcoming boss fights. So yeah, that fight went okay, I guess. It could have been much better. He did this. He did the spin attack, the spin to win attack for some reason. Just kind of weird, but it's all good. And you're killing Rothen that many times because you love him, right? As a boss? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ron is my best friend. That's why I cool. want to kill him so many times. Understandable. All right. So in this area, I'm going to be killing this guy because I'm going to be pulling the lever right here. And those guys jump on you when they, and they explode. So as we're waiting for these doors to open up, I'm going to be popping all these souls. Um, so yeah, you pretty much, 
this is like the perfect area to pop them in because you have nothing to do else. You just stand still and wait. So you want to pop these souls in this time. So yeah. After the door opens, I'm going to kill this guy. And I'm going to kill this guy. That's good. You want to time the guy who is kind of blocking the doorway a little bit. Because if you hit him too fast, your sword is not going to hit you. Because this game is a giant meme when it comes to hitboxes, basically. Your hitboxes are really weird. And the enemy's hitboxes are incredibly broken. So yeah. There's Dark Souls 2 for you. So yeah, picked up the bonfire aesthetic, the third one, and then I'm warping back. Nice. All right. So now I'm gonna warp to run, and I'm reminding myself right now to burn, to 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 burn the bonfire aesthetic because usually when you warp back here, you've already uh, burnt it. But because I'm doing a little uh, playing a bit safer, I need to burn it. <clears throat> so yeah, I killed Ron first time. I burned the bonfire aesthetic. So now you can see the urn respawn right there. So this area right now is on New Game Plus. So I forgot to actually explain what happens on New Game Plus. So on New Game Plus, um, all the enemies are stronger and they deal more damage, uh, but they also give you more soul, which is what you want. So I got poisoned there intentionally uh, because I want the uh, RTSR to be popped up, pretty much. So yeah, I used the uh, Gold Pine Resin and now we fight one. So we're gonna fight him. Uh, three times in a row. So if anyone passes asleep, I will, I will, I'm not, I'm not going to blame you because this is a pretty uh, interesting segment. Okay, I'm actually curious. Can you skip other bosses and just fight more Rothans if you like? Uh, I have no idea, to be honest. Okay, so as you can see, he gave me good attacks, so I managed to mm -hmm. rip off his arm. So he's still in denial, as you can see, and he's still trying to hit me with his hand. But he doesn't know that he doesn't have it. And there you go. That was actually a really good boss fight because I managed to rip off his arm. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm going to warp back here. And again, I'm going to burn the bonfire aesthetic. And for one, three, and four, we're going to be using um, a bright button. What's RTSR pop? So the red tier star wing, it will uh, activate and make you do more damage when your health is low. So we get uh, poisoned there intentionally because it will damage us to a certain extent that will activate the RTSR and then it will allow us to do more damage. So yeah, I'm getting poisoned here intentionally and I'm blocking because um, those poison balls thingy, if they hit you in the head, it will headshot you and you'll get staggered for some reason. I don't know why that happens. But yeah, okay, this is run three. What is he going to do? Really bad attack. That's a yikes. Okay, yeah, so based off the attacks that he gives us, he can give us really bad attacks. This swing attack is not really the worst because you can hit him like three times, but it's still not really the best. The grab attack is pretty awful because when you first hit him, you will tank the damage. So you have to hit him once and then you hit him with the R2. It honestly looks so scary when your health is so low. Well, the thing is, because we're fighting him on uh, New Game Plus, it doesn't make much of a difference. Like, even if our health is full, he can pretty much kill us with, like, two hits. Fair. Yeah. Also, he's one of the few bosses in the game that doesn't have really weird broken hitboxes, so we can fight him with RTSR without really worrying that much. Did you explain, by the way, why you're killing him four times? I did it like five times, but I'll do it again. Did you? So do, yeah, okay. It's so the reason why I'm killing him. Okay, so the, so the reason why I'm killing him four times because I want his souls. Because there's a door that we can't open unless we have at least a million souls. And to get the one million bag, to get the bag, we kill this boss four times. He gives us a lot of souls, and he's pretty easy, and he's close to the starting area, so it doesn't take us a long time. So to open that door, you either have, either have you need to have uh, either a million souls or you need to kill the four main lords um, who are like really pretty much across the globe. Right. Okay, so as you can see, I'm, I'm definitely doing less damage or at least the same damage, but his health bar is much bigger and thicker because he's on run four, so he's much stronger. If he does like this was an attack, you just want to run away. Swing attack, hit him twice. He's very close to dying. What are you gonna do now? 
Okay, I was really afraid I was gonna die from that because that attack actually kind of has a little bit of bugs. Easy. Yeah, we're done. Everybody wake up. Everybody who's passing out, we're done, guys. We're done. The uh, boring I want part more of the rotten. one is over. Okay, I, I was joking. The boring part of the one is not over. The entire one is boring. <laughs> All right, so we're done with one, and now we warp back to Majula. We have six souls that we need to pop. Where is the Herald? Nice, thank you very much. He's in perfect position. And I'm gonna go to the merchant. I'm gonna pop uh, three of these souls, and then I'm gonna pop three of these souls. And then I'm gonna talk to her. I'm gonna buy the fist or the glove, and then I'm gonna buy three bright bucks, and then we say bye-bye, and she dies. Sorry, guys. So now we talk to the Herald, we're gonna level up for the four, for the third and last time. Level up my Vigor to 18, my Endurance to 40, my Strength to 40, and my Dexterity to 40. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna level up anymore, and from now on, which we will just be using, um, we'll be using, uh, Dark Sign instead of Homeward Bones because we don't care about the souls anymore. So the reason why I level up my Strength to 40 as well, because as far as I know, the strength and dex, they both cap at 40. So if you take them higher, it doesn't do much difference. And also, the sword that we're currently using is the rapier, which is a dex sword. But later on, we're going to be using a different sword, which... Um, it's 2 a.m. Uh, which... Um, <laughs> yeah, which is like uh, shared. Like basically, if you have high dex and high strength, the damage will increase based off the two of them. Do you not level up uh, adaptability for like better iframes during rolls? Uh, no, because in this uh, specific route, I'm using the Explorer uh, class, which already has high adaptability. Um, but if I'm nice. using a different route where you use the Bandit class, um, your adaptability is super low, so we definitely need to uh, increase it. So yeah, because I remember that, that being opened. really annoying. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that door that I just opened is the door of the one million bucks. So yeah, we passed this area. This is kind of like the first part of the run. I guess I can call it, I guess the, the run is kind of separated into like three, three different parts. The first part or the first act is over. And hold on. So I don't need the axe anymore. I'm going to equip the um, glove. I'm going to call it the glove because the fist sounds weird. So <laughs> basically, the reason why we need the glove is... Hold on, hold on. I'm thinking, I forgot. Oh yeah, okay, I remember now. So... <laughs> In this game, or I think in every Soul Spunky, I'm not sure, there are thrust weapons and there are blood weapons. So in this area, the enemies that are in this area uh, take more damage to blunt weapons. And that's what the glove does, basically. It's a blunt weapon, it's not a thrust weapon. And we're going to be using it to kill certain enemies in one boss, and then we're just going to throw it away. Is that one million before or after taxes? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> that's my accountant. Okay, so this is the entrance of the castle. Um, these two big stone dudes, if you kill an enemy right next to him, right next to them, the soul of the enemy will get transported to them. And basically that's how you can open the, the gates of the castle. Um, this takes like 20 seconds, by the way. So I'm just gonna be standing here for like one hour until the door opens or the gate. So as you can see, they're both look blue, which means that they've been activated. You have to kill the enemy right next to the uh, stone, and the soul of that enemy will go to them, and that's how they will like get activated. But yeah, I'm, I'm still gonna wait here for the door to open, for the gate to open. So usually, you want to actually do, you want to get hit by these enemies a few times because you want to pop your RTS star for the next boss fight. But I'm not doing it because I'm really scared. And the next boss Fair. fight, we we run into a lot of enemies, and any of them can just hit us, and then we just die. And dying, especially in this game, is really bad because... Oh, I forgot that I wasn't two-handing my left hand, which is why that animation for the opening the door was slower. Um, dying in this category is really bad. Like, even if there's a cl closed bonfire, you're still gonna use... You're still gonna lose, like, one minute. So, yeah, it's pretty tricky. So, I'm gonna walk up here. I'm gonna hit this guy three times. And now his soul is gonna get transported to that uh, door, which is gonna open it. Two-hand my left hand again so I can open this door faster. And then I'm gonna pop this, I'm gonna uh, light this bonfire. So this bonfire is very important uh, because we come back here near the end of the run because the boss fight is right there. So here I'm gonna do two safety pickups. So if any Dark Souls 2 runners are watching this, they're probably gonna make fun of me and say, I'm um, you know, playing it really safe. So that's the first safety pickup. It's an old Radiant Life Gem, which is like a Life Gem, except it heals you a lot more. 
And the reason why I unequipped the Flynn Ring is because it has a very low uh, durability. And in this like orange sea, um, all your equipment breaks. So if I jump there to pick up that other safety pickup with the Flynn Ring, it would break. And you don't want the Flynn Ring to break because it's very strong. And we're going to lose like maybe a minute in total if it breaks because I'm going to be dealing a lot less damage overall. Okay. So we have three enemies here. We have to just roll past them. As you can see, if I had, if I did, if I did you know, try to do RTSR, I probably would be dead by here. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Ouch. Literally just said it. All right, I'm going to play it safe and I'm going to pop a life gem here, even though I don't really need one, but the boss that I'm going to fight can be really random sometimes. So yeah, the boss I'm about, about to fight is actually a boss that you fight a bit earlier than one. But this is how bad this game is. Like they decided to recycle the same boss. Like, they don't care. So these are the Dragon Riders fight. You shoot the guy with the bow, with your bow, to uh, bait him to drop, and then you kill him with four hits. And then you fight this guy. So this guy is stronger and tankier, but you want to kill the arrow dude first. And sometimes you can just put a shield on for like five hours, and you can just dance because you can't really hit him. But yeah, that's uh, Dragon Rider. Nice. That was a pretty good fight. Easy game, easy life. That was very easy. All right, so here you actually don't want to light this bonfire, but I'm doing it because, you know, things might go bad. So the reason why I don't want to light this bonfire is because I'm going to go up this ladder, which is kind of like the ladder from MGS3, Snake Eater. It takes, it, it's like five hours long. Uh, I don't think you have to see me saying a Snake Eater, but yeah, there you go. So after we're done climbing this long, very uh, long thing. Um, I can't say ladder. ladder? I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So I'm gonna kill this guy. His soul is gonna get transported to uh, the stone thing, and now uh, the, the elevator is gonna get called. So the elevator takes like five hours to get called. So the reason why I don't light the bonfire is because you can light it on the way back. So as we're gonna be taking a little stroll um, across the castle. Uh, the, the ladder is still coming down, and it takes so long to come down that uh, we will not... Essentially, uh, when we get there, we're still going to be waiting for the ladder to come down. So we can light the bonfire on the way back um, and not lose any time, basically. But if, I, if you light it before, you'll lose time. Okay. Oh. Okay, that was scary. So, um... <laughs> anyways... <clears throat> So the reason why I had to get hit there is you want to jump because I unequipped the cat ring. You want to take damage. And then if you have full HP, you have to ha have that guy on the stairs hit you a few times. And then you can get your RTSR to pop up. So the reason why I needed to pop up is because we we're about to fight a boss that we fight an RTSR. So I guess I had to kind of lie. We fight Run, at least the way that I do it is I fight Run, um, Looking Glass Knight, which is a really weird name, and Guardian Dragon with the RTSR. These elevators are great, by the way. My favorite segment. Yes, I forgot to mention. So this game has a lot of really long elevators that go on for like five years, and there's absolutely nothing that I can talk about that is interesting because this game is not really <laughs> interesting. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. This game is super fun, the and hate. we're going back to the past, to 2014, and we're having an absolute blast. And that just rhymed. Anyway, so you get up all the way here from that two minute or two hour uh, elevator to pick up the key that we need, and then I'm gonna use Dark Sign to go back. <clears throat> Why is Dark Souls 2 not good? Uh, the level and area design is really bad, and, the, and, the, and there's 41 bosses, and like only five of them are good. And some of the bosses are like the exact same, basically. That's why it's bad. Anyways, <clears throat> I, I had to read a, a question from chat about asking why I'm bashing this game, so I have to defend myself. <laughs> Anyways, so this is the passage that we have to go through to fight Looking Glass Knight, and we fight him with RTSR. So I'm gonna dodge this guy, and I'm gonna go through here. So we fight this guy uh, with the glove, and we also use the Magic Resin because it takes more damage than the Magic Resin. So this boss also has a very specific moveset. Uh, we bait him to do this, and then I'm gonna hit him five times. And then we straight left, and then eight times. I'm not counting. Okay, never mind. 
And he's dead. Nice. nice. Okay, I forgot to count, so I think I did like seven hits, so I got scared. Anyways, Math is hard. So yeah. It is, it is. It's very hard. Okay? I failed calculus twice in college, okay? <laughs> Apparently that guy is a PvP boss if you play online. I didn't know that. I've never like, in my entire he, life touched He PvP summons game. people through his shield. Imagine playing PvP in Dark Souls. That's kind of weird, dude. I mean, I, I wouldn't do that ever. Just saying. Uh-huh. Just saying. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Anyways, that was a very easy clap. Uh, as I said, the boss fight has a very specific moveset. So I just uh, used one of the dragon charms to heal up because I need my HP to be full. And this is arguably, I think if you ask any Dark Souls 2 runner, they'll tell you this is the worst area of the entire game. And I'll go a little bit through why is that the case. So I'm going to light this bonfire in case, even though it's hard to die in this area, I'm still going to light this bonfire because I don't want to take any risks. So I'm going to do a uh, attack here and then I'm going to fall down. That was kind of bad because I didn't, I didn't get to run off, so I would have rolled. And you want to jump between the platforms because uh, it's slower to walk in water. So the reason why this area is the worst area in the entire game slash run because there is an old lady uh, who is who keeps on singing in the background, and her voice is not really good. Um, that's A. Two Ooh. are these guys who are upset that I just uh, insulted the lady's uh, very beautiful singing. I'm sorry, guys. I take it back. She has a very beautiful voice. I'm sorry. So the reason why this area is bad is because you have these guys following you. They do a lot of damage. They have insane attacks, and they can wombo combo you, and you just die. Uh, the second reason is because there are these magicians or sorcerers or Harry Potter dudes. I don't know. Um, and uh, they have a spell that pretty much follows you. It works like a heat seeking rocket, basically. It literally follows you all the way around. And to dodge it, you have to dodge it like at the last second before it hits. So yeah, I lit the bonfire there because... This run is so scary. Thing. What's up? This run is scary. Yes, yes. Honestly, out of the six games that I won, this is the terror. That this is the scariest run for me to do in a marathon. Because, like, if you know, if I die or if I if I make a mistake in the other ones that I do, it's not really the end of the world. But for this game, it kind of is. <laughs> so yeah, uh, as you can see, I'm very focused on the audio cues. Ouch. Everything is fine. <laughs> Everything is fine. I'm totally not freaking out. Breathe. I'm, I'm pretty glad. I'm glad I don't have a heart monitor because it would be at 1,000 right now. <clears throat> Anyways, so the, area, the reason why this area is scary is the third and last reason because we have this fog gate and in front of it is a lot of dudes and they will kill us. So there's a strat that you can do here and it's called the less YOLO strat. And basically what you do is you kill one of the sorcerers this and then you just walk here instead of running to not trigger these guys. Oh no. Oh. Okay, everything's fine. Everything's fine. So because you got hit by the uh, by the spell, um, th these guys were able to hit us. This is definitely supposed to happen, by the way. All planned. Yeah, this is all just really bad RNG. It has nothing to do with execution or timing or gameplay. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. I, I just lost like 30 seconds, but it's fine. I think it's fine. So yeah, unfortunately, I should have... Actually, to be honest, it was it was all uh, by mistake, because I should have like moved a little bit uh, before um, going through the fog gate to dodge the spell, but I didn't. So because that spell hit me, um, those guys like pretty much heard me, so they got triggered and saw me and started hitting me. So yeah, that's fine, everything's fine. So I just killed those two mushroom dudes and I unequipped the flint ring because um, they released this like orange gas that also breaks up your weapons. So if I have my flint ring, there's a chance it might break. Okay, I wanna just juke a little bit of these spells. So a lot of times you actually wanna do RTSR here, but I'm not doing it because, well, I'm pretty scared. This boss is and so cute now, though. Yeah, she, she's very cute. So we finally get to the uh, the source of the singing voice. And you're like, very beautiful voice. And this is the person who's singing. This is Demon of Song. You want to hit her before she uh, covers up her face. 
you buff up, and then you hit her, and she's gonna do the jumping attack because she really sucks. So you don't, you don't want her to do that attack because it wastes a lot of time. But yeah, this, this fight is pretty easy. It's gonna be really funny if I die here. So when she does this attack, you want to dodge it because if you don't dodge uh, the first attack, it will make her to do it will make her do like a, like a lot of follow-up attacks, basically, which is bad. All right, so she's dead. That was a pretty good boss fight. wasn't It wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. GG. Thank you, thank you. I, I appreciate the vote of confidence. I, I thought I was gonna have to bully you through this whole run, but you're, it's going pretty well. No, I'm a god gamer. I don't make any mistakes. <laughs> I'm really glad Obviously you not. don't spiel. I'm really glad you don't spiel in this game because if you did, you'll notice all the mistakes that I made, and now you oh, think yeah? I'm a god gamer. <laughs> yeah, it looks. I'm, I, look, I look really good right now. That was <clears throat> Anyways, so when we killed Demon of Song, he get, uh, she gave us a Keyblade. So we no longer need the Rapier. I'm gonna drop it. So the Keyblade is very strong. Um, and you get like the higher, uh, basically it's like shared between strength and dex. So that's why I level up my, my strength and dex in 40 uh, for this uh, specific weapon. Anyways, so this is the area that I don't know what it's called. Please game, can you tell me what this area is called? The Undead Crypt. Yeah, I actually knew it all along. <laughs> 400 hours, and I have no idea what this area is called. So, in this area, we're going to be fighting a bot a boss called Velstat, I think. And he has really weird hitboxes, and before him is another incredible fog gate that has literally an entire village guarding it. So it's really hard to get, to get past it. Um, and you don't want to kill everyone because it takes like three minutes to kill everyone. Who's, who's, who's standing outside it, so you can actually get past without killing anyone, but it's still really hard. Okay, there you go. Do a little bit of rolls. So yeah, we pretty much have a key blade right now. Like, we have a key and use it as a blade, so I guess it's a key blade. So we go through this fog gate, and there's a little bonfire here that I'm gonna rest at in case things go really, really wrong. They probably shouldn't, but I might get wombo combo and just die. So I let the bonfire, and then I walk past these guys, these like grave thingies. And here there's a, a magician or a sorcerer. I'm gonna use the bite bug here, and he's gonna hit me, and it's gonna cancel the animation of it, but it's still going to count. So the reason why I actually used it here is because we're gonna get invaded by this dude. Um, and if you're invaded, you can't quit out of the game. And you can't use a bright bug for some reason. So you're pretty much just stuck in eternity. So I just did a, a little trick there. Um, you have like two uh, shield dudes guarding the road or the way. And if you shoot an arrow behind one of them, for some reason he goes, what is that? He turns around and he opens the path. So yeah, I just pulled that lever there, which I actually don't need. But in case I die, I take a little a cl a closer way to get back to the boss fight, basically. So yeah. Um, this gate so is here, scary. Yes. So. Now, the reason why I didn't equip the Keyblade till now, that guy hit me, what? Is because it's actually heavy, so if we unequip it, it makes us uh, consume less stamina as we run. And this is why this gate is really scary. Oh my god! Easy. Oh, totally nice. easy. Totally easy. <laughs> How did you do that? I have no idea. I'm gonna be honest, I have literally no idea. So this is Velstat. He has really bad hitboxes that make absolutely no sense. Okay, so if we damage him to like 40%, he starts doing this buffing animation, and we can kill him during it, pretty much. He has one HP left. He's dead. That was a pretty good fight. So you actually want to fight him on RTSR, because you can get him under 40% like super fast. Anyways, he's dead. I'm gonna unequip the uh, ring, uh, the, the keyblade, and I'm gonna pick up the king ring, and then I'm gonna use dark sign to peace out. So lucky, what do you mean, dude? It's all skill. <laughs> Did you say you only have 400 hours? My first playthrough was like 100. Wait, where do I go now? Oh, okay. Speedrunner, by the way. Totally forgot where I'm supposed to go. <laughs> ignore that, ignore that. Um, anyways, so we picked up the King Ring. Basically what the King Ring does is it allows you to open big boy doors that you can only open if you have the King Ring on. So I'm going to equip it right here. And this is, I guess, the third act of the run. Here's what we have to do. We have to kill a boss that will allow us, who's a dragon, 
who's actually a wyvern, but it's called a dragon. To get to a dragon who will give us uh, an item that allows us to access old memories, that will allow us to fight a boss, who will give us a key that will allow us to access the final boss of the game, who is technically not the final boss, but if you kill her, you get the credits, so it just counts. There you go. Simple enough. That was really good, right? Yeah. Yep. So technically, the last, the last, last boss fight of the game is Aldia. But Aldi is a DLC boss, and to access him, you have to like do a lot of weird stuff. But because it's any percent, and you want to finish the game as fast as possible, you don't actually have to fight all. But you fight him on all the on all bosses, and it's a pretty awful boss fight. Like like the thing is, I think uh, the Chandra is probably the worst final boss of any Souls game. But Aldi is just as bad. Funny enough. Anyway, so I went the bonfire there because. Uh, <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna be honest, this is the scariest part of the entire one. I'm gonna fight a boss called uh, Guardian Dragon, and he's not really fun. There's a lot of, you know, weird stuff happening, and we can just die. And if we die, I lose like one minute. And then if I die again, I'll lose one minute more. That's how math works. So here we have this big skeleton, little uh, Jurassic Park Easter, Jurassic Park Easter, I guess. Nice. So, <clears throat> if you do this little jump, you skip the entire area. You're supposed to like go through another area to get all the way here, but I don't even play this game, so I don't even know where you're supposed to go. But that little jump skips a lot of time. Okay, so oh, man. anyways, we're about to we're about to reach Guardian Dragon, and there is a, a, a bonfire near him, but it's really hard to uh, get to. So to get to that, it will take us like one minute straight. So we're just gonna ignore it. Okay, so we have, have two um, elephants or hippos, I don't know what they're called, that are guarding the door. I'm gonna run past the first one, and then I'm gonna use the magic er, uh, the magic uh, resin against this door because this is gonna happen. Thank you very much. Ooh. All right, here goes nothing. Good luck. I'm totally not nervous. <laughs> I believe fine. in you. You can do it. Oh no. Oh easy, nice. Easy. GG. Very, very easy. Okay. <clears throat> <laughs> Are you okay now? <laughs> yes, yes. The the heart rate has been dropped to one nice. to two hundred from five hundred. I probably need to go. I probably need to go see a doctor. So we have another elevator that, that takes five hours. So during this, I'm gonna explain why that boss is scary. So I want to fight him on RTSR because of a very specific move set. When he starts to move his neck, you want to hit his head three times, which deals more damage. Then, um, if your if your position is too close to him, he's gonna fly. If you're too far, he's gonna do the bite attack and he's gonna kill you. If he flies, he can just start flying for like five minutes straight. And he's gonna start spitting fire, dropping his hot new mixtape on you. And when he starts uh, dropping the fire, it has a really weird hitbox that makes absolutely no sense or logic, and it may kill you, even if you're like thousand kilometers away from it or two thousand miles for any Americans watching this. He's a bully. I'm not a bully. I'm just being he's friendly. He's a bully to dragon. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you very much. I thought you were saying I was a bully. <laughs> no. Okay. Anyways. So this is the Dragon Eerie. So this is a very boring segment, to be honest. We just run for like two minutes straight. Nothing really happens. I lit the bonfire because I'm about to do a little skip or jump or trick that saves like two minutes. And it's really hard to fail it. And I hate saying that because every time I say it, I'm like, I'm probably going to fail it now and everyone's going to laugh at me. I'm going to have a little uh, high school flashback. All right. So we cross this bridge, and what are you supposed to do here? You're supposed to go through this cave and do a, like a long 180 to get to the other side here. But if you do this little jump here, hold on. Uh, I think my control is connected. Hello? <laughs> Tactical Guys? reset? Uh, I think my power just went off. I don't know what happened. Whoa. Oh my god, all the lights are flickering. <laughs> I know Ben is watching and he's he's <laughs> laughing so hard right now because that's happened. That's totally planned. 
Okay, let's not fail it again. So I just lost one, like, I just lost a minute because of that. Um, <laughs> all right, so I'm about to do a little uh, jump here. That is really hard. It's super, super hard. <laughs> I realized that every time I undersell something, I just, like, I was like, oh my God, I'm so scared of Guardian Dragon. And then I just do it like casually. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I see English Ben, he's smiling. I can hear him laughing all the way from here. Like so many kilometers apart and I can hear, I can still hear him laughing. All right, let's, let's do this again, please, without failing it. What just happened there? Very easy. Oh, nice. Very, first try. very easy. Yeah, first try, I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, when, when you guys upload this to YouTube, can you like uh, move one minute of the run, please? I appreciate that. We'll have to talk to Richard about that. <laughs> all right, all right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, because uh, this one is deathless, guys. Never died once. <laughs> Anyways, so we like this bonfire here again because uh, we might die. It's still hard to die here, but I don't want to risk it. So basically, I have to do a little uh, very long run all the way to the top of this area because uh, I need to uh, talk to the Inch Dragon, who's also an optional boss that you can fight. He's actually your friend, but you can fight him, but you don't fight him here, thankfully. This is a very long and boring boss fight. Ooh. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. I'm getting nervous. <laughs> Probably was a bad idea to have a face cam because everyone can see how terrified and panicked I am. <laughs> At least you don't have the heart right. monitor. Yeah, yeah, I actually do, but I have it hidden. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm a pretty good actor, you know, I just pretend. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. All right, so, yeah, as, as, as I said, this area is... You're not really going to die, but you might die because you might just get one book combo. So this is Ancient Dragon. He looks really cool. So I'm going to talk to him and I'm going to use the dark sign as I start talking to him. And he gives us the Ashley Mist heart, which allows us to access old memories and force the fallen giants. So now I'm going to go back to the beginning of the one. There you go. All right, so once again, I'm going to do a little uh, big boy jump that uh, saves a lot of time. So what you're supposed to do here is you have to like run all the way down to access a king door. But if you go right here, look back, do a taunt, Get on this platform, aim right here, do back roll, run, jump, you fall down here, and you do the jump. Nice. So I'm going to drink the SS Flask. Nice. Because I'm really scared. Okay. So this fight is also scary. It's not as scary as Guardian Dragon, but it's still scary. I'll tell you why. Because this game is really random. So <clears throat> the boss we're about to fight is called Giant Lord. He has really weird hitboxes that make absolutely no sense or logic. And uh, when we start the fight, he will do like a shockwave attack where he tries to hit us. And he can hide behind a wall. So fun fact, because how because of how random this game is, he can actually hit us through the wall. So let's see if I'm gonna get the paper wall or not. We did not. Nice, perfect hitbox. Thank you very much, Tiny Mora. Never mind. Okay, so when you fight this guy, you don't want to lock in because the camera gets all wonky and stuff. And you'll start seeing things. Okay, let's see. Uh, everything is fine. Everything is fine. Everything no is sweat. Fine. Oh, God. Do you know this is the same giant as you fight in the beginning? That's like my only lore knowledge of this game. Wait, really? Yeah. I actually have no idea. That's why he's so angry when you first meet him. But we killed him. No, he didn't die. Apparently he got imprisoned and captured. Cool, cool, cool. Nice. Very interesting lore. Yeah, wow, I know. I'm, I'm, I know. I'm you, actually, yeah. you actually did homework for it's this the, one. Wow. It's the only thing I know about this game. <laughs> okay, so that fight was really easy. It was just super easy. Um, <laughs> Totally wasn't sweating or anything. So these are the two items that I picked up as a safety. The old uh, Radiant Life Gem and the Elizabeth Shroom. So um, the Elizabeth Shroom works like a Life Gem. It heals you a lot. The difference between it and a Life Gem is if you use it when you have full HP, it will still take effect. While a Life Gem won't. So if I use this Life Gem right here and I lose damage, it's, um, um, it's, 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 it's going to be like, it's not going to do anything. I'm not going to heal up or anything. 
Uh, yeah, so anyways, we're coming up into the last uh, two fights of the game. So we should be on time, unless I die like five times. So yeah. I believe If I play well here, which is obviously going to happen because I make no mistakes in this run, um, I'm going to be under one hour, which is going to be really cool. So yeah, I have this very long path. I'm wearing the... Uh, so you can actually do this run without any clothes, but I'm wearing my clothes in case things go really wrong. Um, use the Bright Bug, take out our sword, buff it up, and then eat the shroom. So this fight is pretty scary because uh, you fight two people and they can wombo combo you really easily. So this is the throne duo fight. They're guarding the throne and the Chandra is inside. Okay, uh, you actually want to kill her as she's doing the buff. But I didn't really get time because uh, he, he was kind of guarding her. So... <laughs> Everything is fine. So yeah, taking this fight slow and safe is pretty <laughs> fine to do. Okay, she's dead. So now the fight is much easier. It's going to be funny if I die here. Um, because the entire like stigma... I don't know what stigma even means. The entire reason why this fight is hard is because you have to fight the two of them at once and they can wombo combo you pretty much. So that's what makes the fight hard. There you go, nice. Nice. Alright, so heal each other too, right? dead. Yeah, if you take a long time, they can actually revive each other. So, we're about to fight Nishandra, who is the last boss of the game, but not really. All right, so this is Lissandra. I'm going to run up, hit her three times or four, four times. Yeah, there you go. And then I'm going to run back and use the um, Life Gym, which is going to bait her to do the laser attack, which is what we want her to do, because we can hit her when she does this attack, basically. So you always want to bait her to do this attack, because it uh, gives you an opening to hit her, pretty much, and this fight should be over, I think. There you go, GG. Easy. Oh my god, GG, god gamer. No deaths. <laughs> no, I died once, but yeah, sure. I, we don't okay, have uh, get, Okay, uh, get ready on time. And... Time. Nice. Very nice. Gosh, you know, Zero, I have to applaud you, yeah, for your awesome explanation of all the speedrun tech. That was really cool uh, to to see, and I hope everyone uh, enjoyed it. Do, do you have uh, any uh, shout-outs that you'd like to give or anything you'd like to, to add? Yes. Uh, first, I'd like to shout-out Apollo, or Steph, for uh, showing up and doing uh, this commentary. Emotional support? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I had no one else. <laughs> she was like, sure, I'll do it. Why not? Uh, I want to give a big shout-out to like, to one of my uh, closest friends, uh, Mr. Brood, who actually helped me a lot when it came to learning this game. Uh, I could have had him, but he's asleep because he has a because he has responsibilities. Aww. And uh, big shout outs to Tippy or Smooth Operative for asking oh, this one. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I'm so glad you said to, yes. Uh, yeah, big shout out to Games on Quick as well for uh, for letting me do this one. I really appreciate it. Big shout out to everyone who showed up and watched. And uh, big shout outs to English Ben for uh, laughing at this one. Because I know he's watching and he's probably making fun of me. So yeah. But that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the run. Uh, take care. For sure. Well, thank you both so much for being here. Uh, if you if you uh, watching out there enjoyed the run, please follow Call Me Zero here on Twitch. That's Call Underscore Me Underscore Underscore Zero with two O's. Uh, and Apollo, LOL, for that commentary as well. A quick reminder that our all-women speedrunning event, Frame Fatales, returns with another event that is Fleet Fatales online this Sunday, November 15th through November 21st. Go to gamesdonequick.com slash Frame Fatales for more information on that. Before we break, a big thank you to our current subscribers. Our subs Your subscriptions uh, directly support this show and other Hotfix shows, and it is very much appreciated, so thank you so much. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is coming up next. Don't go away. Welcome back to Time Capsule, everybody, here on the Games Done Quick Twitch channel. We are all set up for the funkiest speedrun of all time, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. I have Not-So-Newbie here, ready to run. Hey, Newbie, would you like to introduce yourself in your commentary for tonight? Sure, I'm Newbie. I'm running Tropical Freeze. 
And joined with me tonight are Michael Goldfish. Yo. And Spike Vegeta. Hello, hello. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for being here. Um, maybe whenever you're ready, we can start the timer, but take your time. All right. Uh, yeah. Are you guys ready to go? Yeah, Let's we're do it. We're ready. Let's go. Yeah. Let's do it. I better get to ready to play. All right. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Baby, Woo! here we go. Yeah. The fans go wild. I hope everyone's having a good night tonight. Let's play some Tropical Freeze. Newbie, do you Let's want to play it. some Tropical Freeze? Yeah, I'll play some Trap tonight. Yeah, that sounds if, you, if you have to. <laughs> if I have to. You guys want yeah, to uh, talk a into it. about the category that I'm doing, the wonderful category? Yeah, Goldfish, you should introduce it because uh, you, up until about 24 hours ago, had record in this category. Yeah, I did. Damn you, jumps. So the <laughs> most common category in this game is any percent no death abuse, where you're simply playing through as few levels as possible. But what we're doing is true, only legitimate any percent, where you uh, skip like eight of the levels instead of playing them. So with um, the Nintendo Switch version, there is this new funky mode, you play Funky Kong, but they also added a feature where if you die eight times in a level, you can just exit and go to the next one if it's too tough. So we can do that in the <laughs> levels where there are really quick pits or they're extremely long. So that means eight levels get skipped and we only play like, yeah, eight less than we normally do, which is pretty good. 33, yeah, because there's 41 in any percent. So that's why it might sound like, oh, that sounds kind of lame, but for, here's two arguments against the thought it's lame. One, well, there's like three arguments. One, it's the fastest way to play the game. Two, most everything we're skipping are actually auto scrollers. So it's cutting those out anyways, a lot of fluff in the run anyways. And three, as you saw earlier, Newbie actually had to route in picking up that one-up balloon earlier. You need to route in getting enough one-ups so that we don't see the game over screen as much. Because dying eight times for those levels, that's balloon, 64 balloon, balloon. times. Yes, balloons! Hey, let's go, dude! That's actually huge. When you get the yeah, barrels, fishing. if you get it on the DK, you can either get bananas, coins, or balloons, which we just got. So you're done. This is world record pace. Actually. This is incredible. Oh, Do I explain why record it's world record pace? pace? <laughs> yeah, so game Ooh. offering's really slow. Because you have to watch yeah. him get stuck in the ice cube and then go back to the main screen and then watch it slowly bring you back up to five lives, then re-enter. Yeah, the thing about this route is that I have to get I have to get enough lives to essentially death abuse every single level that I need to. So I need kind of like 35 lives more than normal. Uh, which most of them come naturally, a bunch of them don't. So I have to take a trip to the shop, but I have two opportunities to get balloons in those end barrels randomly. I think, what is it, like 2% chance? It's pretty low. The, yeah, I get both. Oh, yeah. That, okay, it feels I like so I need to get one ups. So what you need to do is get one one and one three. If you get both of those, you can skip the shop, and that saves like 20 seconds. <laughs> so I'll be trying. So far, so far you're crushing going it. all right. Yeah. Nice little water skip right here from Funky Kong as he skips right across to see if he can get a nice little bounce off this enemy and not have to wait on the boat at all. Nice. Extra and balloon, you're kind of perfectly on cycle to get that red balloon. The way the end barrels work is they cycle through a bushel of bananas, a one-up balloon, a coin, which you can use to buy lives and other things in the shop, and the slot machine, where it's one of those three randomly, and you can mash it. Well, the way we mash, we, we should be getting a max of 15 every time, um, unless you're just like really yeah. off your game. But uh, And we're hoping that we get the one-ups, because it is, like you're saying, it's by far the lowest odds of the three you're going to see. Um, there's also a lot of just like, we can talk about Funky Kong, the character we're playing as. Um, he is effectively almost like the, the the baby mode, the easy mode character casually. But in speedrunning, he's actually very fun to play as because there's so much optimizing of the double jump he has. He has a hover, but it's very slow. So optimally, we almost never see the hover throughout the course of the run. Um, he also doesn't take damage on spikes. So that's why in that section right there with Newbie, he really wanted to make sure he didn't land on the spikes. Because even though it wouldn't have, he wouldn't have taken damage, that would have been the hummus flu. Goldfish, what is the hummus flu? Hummus flu is miserable. Normally, you take damage and you get to move on with your life. But here, you just get friggin' stuck like a big loser, dude. It's really it, bad. 
For like casual playthroughs, it's a godsend because you just live through everything. But when trying to speedrun, it's actually so much worse. Love the truth. Here we go. Oh. Oh, we've got bananas. Oh, yeah, so I have to go to the shop now in World 2. Oh, well. Yeah. One-ups are thankfully on funky mode. They're very cheap. I believe it's one coin, one line. Yeah, it's a one-to-one. -one. Um, yeah. yeah, and I already got 15 extra ones, so I don't even need coins. Which is great. Oh, good level coming up, by the way. Yo, the, love this The one. first of eight, this is peak and true any percent category right here. Yeah. Really sets the tone for the next level. Oh, yeah, I had to think about it. I was about to give like auto scroller commentary. I forgot. Huge. <laughs> yeah, so oh, we wait, have to yeah, do eight yeah. of those. After the eighth, we'll get a big prompt saying, hey, you're doing your best. You can quit, by the way. You're doing your best. <laughs> Good job. Hang in there. Yeah. And again, this is the first of five auto scrollers in the run. I would assume we skip all five of them. Do we not skip three, five? We don't skip 3-5. Yeah, there's only half that level anyway. Yeah, and it would take forever to die. Yeah, for sure. Because the other thing to keep in mind is that Funky Kong, again, being the easy mode character casually, they gave him five hearts. So if there isn't a pit, it's pretty rare that we're going to want to utilize Death Abuse to get through a level because taking five hits of damage, waiting through 30 seconds of iframes, really not going to be worth it. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of considerations in terms of timing. So, like, this pit is super quick and easy to, to just die quickly. So it's definitely faster than the level. Some of them take a little bit more time. Uh, and there's even some levels where we go to a checkpoint and then die after that because there's a pit right next to the checkpoint. And it's still Yeah, there's actual routing. The Good effort. Which Hang I, in there when you want to move yeah. on. The next... Okay. All right, we want to move back. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it was possible for someone to die in Tropical Freeze more than I have on a GDQ stage, but Newbie has done it. I did it. In 1-4, actually. Pretty crazy. In the first world. Oh, yeah. Big switch. Big, big switch, switch energy. <laughs> this is so, my favorite boss. In the yeah. So this boss went from... Uh, oh, he had some okay strats to him in the Wii U version, too. You see, we can actually swap from Funky Kong to the DK family. Um, that is because Cranky's cane hitbox Ooh. on Pompey here is really weird. You're not supposed to pogo on his face from that high up in the air. If you ever watch Tropical Freeze, basically imagine we're DuckTales with Scrooge McDuck, woohoo. And uh, yeah, just hitting him super early as soon as he's in position. Every boss is gonna work off of three phases, three health per phase. So he's also timing, making sure he rolls through one fish and gets the recoil off of the shield enemies to bounce off the other fish to get them off screen as fast as he can. Now he's transitioning into phase two. He's waiting for a visual cue and then he'll try to go in and get hit number four. Very nice, already four for four, already better than me. Uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. This right here is like the only phase you have to kind of like let it ride out a little bit. He's just not present on screen. I didn't count my fish. Very nice. Six for six. Oh, BM hits. Let's go. Get my, get my free oh, It actually farms points. It does. <laughs> not BM. Yep. Yeah, another section where you're just trying to kill all the enemies on the screen as fast as possible. Very Nicely nice done. play done. Ooh, into the hit. Yo, Let's perfect go. Pompey. Perfect Pompey. Let's go. Perfect, perfect Pompey. Let's go. That is not easy to do. Yeah, well done. Yeah. So that is one of two points in the run where he's going to switch to the Donkey Kong family. Um, uh, right there for one boss, and now he's going to switch back over to Funky in a uh, two in worlds two and beyond and then all of world four is going to use the dk family we'll talk more about that later once we get there but for now it's time for some uh uh some good jams here in world two good jams. windmill hills love this track yeah i think he's well, generally just faster in the whole run he has his double jump and he doesn't lose any speed doing it so yeah we're also going to come across uh pits finally Yo, no, like, uh, world ramp, which scary. just has water everywhere. You, uh, yeah, game ramps it up a little bit, starting, uh, starting at two one. <laughs> yeah, there's just hummus. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Gonna utilize 
these platforms right here that are swinging to the right, just pushing Funky a little more to the right. Get a little more chin as you go through. Nice value balloon. I actually don't need it because I got the balloons, but I'm just used to getting oh, it. Oh, that's true. <laughs> value heart back up to five. Back up, let's go. I say we're just keeping safe. You never know. We might run out of the hearts. I say that, but I unironically lost all five health in six, seven at GDQ a few years back. <laughs> oh. No, this platform's better anyway. Oh! oh I didn't even know that was a thing. Spike, this is bread roll. Yeah, this is bread Let's roll. Go. This oh, is a that's Void hot. classic. Thanks to Void for finding that like two months ago. <laughs> Game's always evolving. It's one of those things where Six it's like, no one's later. tried that? Like, why have we just tried that? No, no one tried it. <laughs> now we got this last section right here. Are we going to pound? No. All right, we we drop it down. We drop. Okay, okay. We're not taking it to pound town. That's okay. It's yeah, okay. We're, we're just chilling. We got the G though. Yeah. And there should be another free balloon just without the cycle lines up. The cycle starts moving as soon as you hit it on camera. If you just hold right and roll Y into it, you'll get that one up every time. Mm -hmm. That's you up on the two one. I enjoyed the bread roll. Yo, bread roll's good. Bread roll's good. Patented void tech. I think it's only like point like a half second faster or something. Which in this game, the, as much as it's been op optimized over the years, like half seconds in 2D platformers are massive. Mm -hmm. It's one of the strats that is not actually in the world record. Yeah, it's world point. record yet. Yo, we don't take Randy. Get out of here. <laughs> I was yeah, gonna say I was like of, uh, the animal buddy stages. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get him eventually, but not for a while. Yeah, midway you uh, you really want the big fella, but mm -hmm. no, you you got tech. You got there's the a lot of uh, you're gonna start to see there's a lot of weird momentum speed stuff going on, like right here off of the swinging platform. What? You can kind of just carry your speed super far. That was really good. That was that was pretty much yeah the, the perfect boost there. Yeah, the damage yeah. there is intentional. It's just the angle you come at, but you're able to. Basically combine your roll speed with a platform moving to the right and having a lot of momentum. You'll see little instances of it even here on Rambi. Keeping a little cool. bit more. <gasps> Come here. Ooh. That's okay. Oh, and we got him back. The save. We got him back. Sometimes he just yeah. runs off. Doing another big boost with Rhombus the Hippopotamus here. Nice. nice. Got him. Run the boys. Let's go. A little mini one here coming up. Yeah. Oh, nice it cable. Up. Getting the tiny speeds every chance mm -hmm. you get. Yeah. Yeah, to note what's kind of interesting about the dynamic of tropical free speed runs over the years is that uh, Funky Kong has a lot of levels where he saves a little bit of time here and there. One level where he's going to save a ton of time later, you'll see. The DK family actually has a few levels where they save a good chunk of time. Like, actually, that level. With Cranky's Pogo, you can actually carry a lot of those that momentum off the swings very far, but it's not worth the time for us to swap back to the DK family and swap off again, other than the two instances we do it for in this run. If you had just Funky Kong race against just the DK family, I think the DK family would actually win in terms of like overall speed of the run. Their time yeah, saves like, are a little bit bigger. Yeah, like just DK family versus just Funky. Yeah. Yeah, they save really a lot nice. of time in on Pompey and in uh, World Four. Yeah, World another 4 very cool level. Yeah. yeah, our first instance of global cycles. Ooh. Whoa, so these uh, these okay. leaves specifically above the horns are based on the music instead of the camera. So messing up is a bit more costly in this level. Yeah. So if he ever makes a mistake throughout the level, newbie has to keep that kind of internal clock in his head of, okay, I messed up here. That means I have to play this section of the level a little differently. But now he's gonna go for a nice double grab jump right there. I don't know if we've really explained double grab jumping. Uh, Goldfish, I know you were one of the first to find it, if you wanna explain a little bit about what it is. Yeah, so Donkey Kong's regular double jump is just press jump when you're in the air. But if you actually do a grab in midair right before jumping, your double jump will give you more height because reasons. So we actually use that a lot. You can watch out for it whenever Newbie does a double jump. A lot of the time you'll see Funky do the little grab in front of his body before the double jump. And he'll just go way higher than he's supposed to normally. <laughs> nice, oh, we forgot to cough. I'm sorry, my dude. 
it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> it's funny because you have a double uh, It's a sound effect, you know? Really, you know? Yeah, you're just gonna get there. Also, it's not appropriate nowadays to cough, I don't think. Alright, I love this level too. This is a great one. It's good. <laughs> Sawmill thrill. So on. this is a really cool. I absolutely love the track in this game. Coming up, the first thing he's gonna want to do is uh, he's <laughs> I actually forgot this is one. It's nine levels then, my bad. Oh, oh yeah, definitely skipping this one. <laughs> oh, it's actually a good level though. At least you get to hear yeah. the beginning. The beginning of the track's really good, and you don't hear it anywhere else. Although I guess it cuts every time you die. <laughs> we're, gonna, so. say, we're gonna be nice and isolated on this four-second part of the track. Eight <laughs> times that we're gonna peace out. It's a good track though. No, the great. only the only small thing I'm actually trying to do here is not like clip the ledge or anything, because it is like, I don't know, a frame slow or something. You just wanna get that swish every time. Right into the pit. Yeah, newbie still does have to actually play the game. It's not completely free kind to of. do this. I mean, something. it adds up if you mess it up. It's not. I mean, it's not it big, but I mean, if you clip the ledge eight times, like that's true. Right. We made fun. That's of like, that's like two seconds. Yeah. I swear, it's only like two or three more times, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fun. <clears throat> and the viewer count level oh, is unlocked. No. Just select Where exit level and. The... Okay, I have to go to the shop. Unfortunately, this is this is sad. But it's a quick shop anyway. We get to so see yeah, our boys. This is what's oh, rough see. about if you're going on a grind for true any percent. If you don't get the 15 one ups from both one one and one three, which again we decided was like a two percent chance, then uh, yeah, you basically just you just restart your run because 20 seconds is too massive right at the start of a run to really keep it going, especially the more competitive it gets. Yeah, Goldfish and I grinded that one night. We just both did it. And so one of mess. us got the double balloons, and then the other person just stopped and let the other person yeah. finish the run. It, it was, was pretty hype, honestly, because then you have to do the rest I of I mean, the it was hype for that. everybody else. It was one of those, okay, this is my last attempt of the night, then I'm going to bed, and then double balloons. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta stay up for an extra hour. And you died on one three, then you got the second set of balloons. I was like, wow, let's go. Uh, oh yeah, talking about the uh, the actual stage, we get to go left for once, which is kind of cool. Oh yeah, it's pretty it's mind mind game, actually. I mean, it's a cool thing that it's not just an only hold right. You get to go like other directions once in a while. It's always nice. Oh, no oh, I was, gonna, I was getting ready to compliment you on getting the speed from the bounce there, but. Yeah, it's kind of tricky. You have to basically jump at the same time you land on that balloon. There's not that big of a window, but... It would have been cool if you did it. It just keeps your speed, regular speed, your fast speed. Because balloons normally like this are super slow. Mm -hmm. It's okay, you can show it off later. Yeah. Very nice Life, let's go. Very nice 43 balloon. lives. I, I love just like the concept of thinking about lives in the run. It's mm -hmm. so good. Yeah. It's it's a lot a lot tighter when uh, you don't get balloons on the first one one or one three. Mm -hmm. You actually have to think about it. You have to like route coins and and then count your bananas. Like technically, there's an optimal route where you just get the exact amount of bananas you need to. And you end the run on like zero and on zero lives. Yeah. That's crazy. I would not. So technically, again, you never have an unintentional death. I could never run this category. I need to be able to fall in a pit here and there on accident. You cannot have an unintentional death, optimally. My PB does not have an unintentional death, which is cool. But I don't think it was optimal, so. Okay, this level's also death abuse. Yeah, only full optimization and he's dead. <laughs> yeah, so this is another one where, since the very beginning of the stage doesn't have any pits nearby, it's actually faster to play the semi-auto scroller to the checkpoint so you can get into the pit faster. This this whole thing Which is I think is sweet. That's super cool. Yeah, it's pretty Like, I, I genuinely did not think this would be faster until we timed it. Mm -hmm. It's like five or six seconds faster, which is, like, enough to do. Enough to make a difference, for sure. Mm-hmm. The only one that's extremely close, yeah, I think it's 6-7. That was like within seconds, but it's 
not faster within seconds. I think one or two seconds. Even though there's a pit right near the beginning of 6-7. I love this category. I'm trying to think how many. I always zone out for this. So what, I three more? Two more? I, I have no idea. I think three more. I think two after this. I might be wrong, though. Okay, we'll see. Oh, oh wow, wow, I was off. In the pause menu, and then continue to the next level. Eventually, we're going to get through that. I'm actually going to finish the whole thing, yeah. That was pretty quick. Nice. That was quick. That's it. World 2's done. Except for... Scowl. Except for Scowl. Yeah, except for the uh, legitimately super tech-heavy boss fight. But, uh, no yes. <laughs> this was my first... This is, I thought, the first boss that just, like, has really, really cool strats to it. But once again, it's three different phases. <laughs> I'll take you to different tiers, climbing progressively. You gotta hit him with three... Uh, Three of his little egg buddies each phase. Well, he's gonna poop him out, and casually, you'll take quite a while on this boss. We're gonna try to end one cycle of three sets of these eggs, take him out. He gets super technical as we go through the phases. So pick up one, bounce off the other one, pick up the second one, chain it all together, and then basically catch him on the spawn. Already phase one down, going up to phase two. Now this one gets even more technical. Goldfish, tell me about what he'll be doing here in phase two. Oh, well, he's gonna, uh, he's gonna throw us the west wind, you know, and give us a single hoot coming up right here. So we bounce on that nerd, grab the egg, then we jump on the three stack, throw the hoot onto Scowl, grab the second hoot. Oh yeah, you do the double. Okay, now you do the three stack throw, pick it up, bounce on the other guy to put him down, hit Scowl again, then go left and do the last throw. Uh, boom, I thought his feet toesies would get above it, but that's already phase two down. It's and actually... Again, it, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say, it's, and what's interesting about that is if you just let the eggs sit on the ground, then they will despawn after a while. So that's why it's very specific how long he has to wait to make sure all three of them load on screen, that he picks them up at the correct time, that he gets the hits at the right time. Very, very cool second phase there. Yeah, even when he's bouncing on the hoots to get them all stunned on the floor, he's picking his spots when to bounce on them too, so that the timer doesn't run out either. No, this boss is sweet. Being able to hit Scowl at any time is in the air is a blessing. Mm -hmm. Instead of just making it lock to specific moments. Yeah, except way in the background. <laughs> but, no, super cool boss for sure. Is anyone trying yeah, that but... before he drops the eggs? Hitting him that early? Want new tech? Yeah, I don't know. You can try, just go another cycle. It's only two minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no problem. <laughs> Give it a shot. Very nice. Easy. Well done. Sweet. Good Good first two worlds. Pretty yeah, sweet. Yeah, two down. This game's easy. <laughs> I never yeah, that was actually really good, though. It's easy to mess up. Mm -hmm. And then you yeah, miss it... one hit, and then Scowl is throwing these ice balls everywhere, and a minute later, yeah. he's still pooping out babies. It's a mess. Yeah, a lot of the boss tech is spacing as well. Like, you have to be in certain spots. At certain times, a lot world three boss does a lot of that too. So that's mostly the boss tech, spacing and timing. I guess that's all speed running, but you know. Yeah, but it's pretty specific there on that boss. Mm -hmm. Another one of the really good boss fights, and we're not done with really good boss fights in this run. A lot of tense stuff coming up. Also, we have a polar bear, but we'll get there later. But yeah, here we are in world three. Uh, this is everyone they call it. it's the Lion King level. Um, and it's the second of three levels that's going to be based off of uh, global cycles as we go through the level, um, where everything's based on the music. So if he newbie is a little slow, he'll actually miss uh, these uh, giraffe puppets, because that's just what they are, um, coming up here in just a little bit. And that would cost him seven seconds, which is a no bueno. We don't want to see that. I didn't miss a cycle. No, you're crushing it. Okay. Yeah, you're super good on time. Yeah, skip the zebra yellows. Get to the zebra reds. I am ahead, okay. Yeah, see? No, you're I just did it, some, something weird, and it was, like, throwing me off. No, you're good. I was like, wait, am I off something? Nah, yeah, you have a really decent amount of leeway for the beginning. Yeah, it's probably, like, a couple seconds is... at least to make it. Mm -hmm. Each cycle costs seven if you miss, so it's about three and a half, I guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. here's a little bit tighter. These uh, big spooky snake boys coming up here. Mm -hmm. Wiggle left and right, and you want to catch it when you can get onto the snakes at the end. 
So it's a bit tighter than the first section. Yeah, so we caught it. Yeah, this guy right here. Crushing it. I'm gonna try to get this barrel. I've been I've been I've been getting it lately. I'm gonna uh, have to try it by. No, you got Ready? this. Oh, hold. Oh. 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 He maybe used this is the player of my game. I liked it. The hub hub. Good effort, so good effort. Good hustle. Yeah. It's only a couple seconds, not too bad. Oh, you didn't wait for the Donkey Kong audio? That's a shame. I know I should have. <laughs> <laughs> the classic thing, Dave. He has an Easter egg where if you wait there for maybe eight minutes, <laughs> you get to hear cool music. Yeah, sadly, no time for that, I guess. Hey, at Ginger Express, I showed the dude getting eaten in 5 2 at the end. <laughs> that was at least as long as the Donkey Kong wait. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's good. The dude getting eaten is, is good. Murdered the poor bunny, dude. Just wrecking him. Oh, so three twos, a relatively straightforward level. We got a nice little climb right here with the flowers. You know, bounce off of this hoot, skip over the rest of that section. Very nice. Yeah, this level's pretty chill. Uh, there's a one-hit KO fruit at the end, but I don't want to get it. Oh, yeah, that'd be terrible, but also hilarious. I'd be down. Also, that bowl he just passed back there. Very nice hair. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, you kind of skip like the main mechanic of this level. Those pink flowers he's been passing um, like <laughs> wiggle left and right when you stand on them, so you can play the game without rolling. But we yeah, know how to play the, things... the game, so we don't do that. Right. That's one of the things about Funky we noticed is like you can skip like some of the cool stuff. Three and. All right, three. That's so, solid. One was a full circle. Oh, it was like a 3.5. I just did. Uh, the other day I did one, and I got five, and then I died. Oh, dang. <laughs> yeah, okay. I respect, I the, so, I respect the three. I just don't really want to do this level again today. That's <laughs> it's not the most interesting level. And if you want interesting levels, oh, wait. I, I'm the only one who would still slap Ramby's butt. We skip Ramby. This is so. Yeah, that's what makes it interesting. Right. Oh, that here's the no second Ramby level in the run, and uh, we will have used Ramby for a total of half of those two levels by the end of this level. Sorry, who? Uh, sorry. Uh, we mean Rumpus. Oh, right. Our yeah, dude. Oh. That's a pretty good. That's awesome. What I did. Oh, yeah, these uh, these tornadoes oh. can boost you back a little bit if they're going to the left. You want to try to catch them at the bottom so you can just blow through them instead of getting caught like back there. Mm -hmm. This Let's one you're kind of stuck on because they're camera based. Yeah, yeah so that specific tornado we can forgive you. The other ones though, terrible. Terrible. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, first Randy skip. We don't need. It. Yeah, Rambi just unfortunately kind of sucks because every time you start up a run with him, it's like a tenth of a second of like startup animation as opposed to just getting to like land and roll again immediately. And his max run speed is the same as Funky's. So. Yeah, and all the obstacles that Rambi could get through, like blocks and stuff, we just double jump over everything. So it's pretty clean. That's G. Yeah. Got the hundo strats in there too. Yeah, the practice. That was really good. That was a grab jump, by the way, if you noticed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, effectively those grab jumps, like Micro Goldfish said earlier, allowing you to effectively not lose any height. It almost feels like a true, true double jump, almost like a triple jump, like a quad jump you're doing. Okay, I need to calm down. Uh, oh boy. But yeah, it's you. You gain you know, a lot of mad height. height, though. Yeah, I love it every time. I hope like, he does. There must have been. Right. There must have been at least like double digits number of like jumps we tried to make. We just barely made it. And then once we found grab jump, it's like, oh my god, all of this like this whole game's a joke now. Yeah, <laughs> finally, I just play. Yeah, the amount of scores is just, like so low now. Scorching Torch, another level that's relatively straightforward, but there is a very scary skip that I believe you'll be going for at the end. Yeah. Yeah, why not? We're on GDQ. Yeah. Let's show yeah, it. He's got this I'll crush it. If he gets it, it saves about two and a half seconds, but if he misses it, he dies, and uh, everyone in chat can make fun of him. Please. Shit, sir, you have formal permission to make fun of me. Yeah. 
Intentional hit here. Yeah, this is the setup. Under the rope. Grab Let's that go. one. Jump so out. Free. Nice. Let's go. So fresh and so clean. Clean. Very nice. Do it again. Go back. All right. All yeah, right. getting that fine skip is actually a bit trickier than it looks. So I remember, it's a I remember tight, practicing right? that. It's like, oh yeah, this is so easy. And then you go on a run, and you just beef it. Yeah, so you yeah, have to that's really good. Grab late, do the you do your double jump late, hover a little bit. Like there's a whole bunch of stuff you have to set up. This is the auto scroller we're gonna play. We're only gonna play half of it though, so it's okay. It's still quick. Yeah, so in every world there are secret exits. Um, where you can access uh, a couple of additional levels. Um, sometimes the levels, the way they fall on the world map, it's just an additional level. It's not really an alternative level. Um, but coming out of this level, 3-5, there's actually three different exits. The normal one and two secrets. The other secret is like past the regular exit. It's really far into the level. This one cuts out like half of the level and it very conveniently sends us to the shortest of the three levels that you can branch off and then go do here. We'll be going to Bramble Scramble after this. So very convenient, auto scroller, but there's no pit or anything at the start. This is absolutely faster and we get a faster level in return anyways, because otherwise it would just send you through the normal exit. If we did take a death abuse. Yeah, and optimally, unlike actually any other category, you, wa you want to kind of get bananas and stuff in this. So there's a lot of goodies in here. Yeah, this is actually the best auto scroller to be forced to play. <laughs> yeah, there's so much. Oh, those two banana rings where I left only one banana. Optimal. Oh, that Kong letter. Ooh, yeah, so good. Good. We could unlock so a new good. level later. Oh, nice. Yeah, not quite what we're trying to do with uh, <laughs> true any percent. And a life, let's go. Four yeah, that was really four. good. Uh, very definitely way too good. Yeah, let's go. 3B is pretty cool. It looks nice. Some stuff can go wrong. There's some tricky parts in it. You may or may not see it. Yeah, there's more uh, rolling into bouncy platforms to keep your speed. A ton of hummus glue. Yeah, it's all over the place. Oh, oh, littered brand. with hummus glue. And you also can't really see what you're doing until you're there with uh, how the level pops up. Nice bounce over all the hummus glue, chaining that together. So there's a lot of just kind of jumping and just trusting yourself that you know the visual cues of where stuff is going to be as opposed to being able to see it. Yeah, confidence is the name of the game on this one. Nice chain That's bounce. Smart. You're actually bodying this. This is really good. Yeah, That's spin off. This is really fun. Not even just this, but like <laughs> overall, like. Yeah, this is our ace. This one's killing us so far. Fun run, fun run. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a little bit. <laughs> it was pretty intense. Yeah. All right. Yeah, this last we'll section, they'll chip away to second. We're, not, we're just getting this thing through by the bean. Yeah, On to three boss. Point. Actually, perfect. Yo, extra life for the bananas? Calculated? <laughs> perfect. So precise. Sublime, as NK would say. That's really quick. This game is really fast. This game is fast. It's fast. I keep waiting for that. Because, yeah, I'm also more used to the uh, the no death abuse stuff. So I keep waiting to get bored with all the kills and stuff. But, like, we're kind of just plowing through these levels right now. Yeah. It's it's actually surprising how much faster it feels. Like, I just I just jammed three runs on Sunday. No problem. I could have done a fourth, mm. too. Whereas, normally with, like, 80%, I'd be, like, kind of burnt out after two in a yeah. day. Our boy, the hip-hop group known as Baboom the Boisterous. The Collective Boisterous. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is another really interesting fight where all three of them have three health apiece in each phase. So once you deplete one of their health to zero, that will move you to phase two. However, it's not as simple as just kill one of them. You actually want to hit the others in a lot of spots that just progress the stages of their attacks further in. So you see him one health down on the one on the right, one health down on the one on the left. Now he's going to wait until they both land, knock this one on the ground, then kill that one, wait until the other one lands and go was under the rope, hitting the second one, knocking that one off screen, 
then killing the left one, bringing it down. It's already in position. It doesn't do extra attacks to do all these bomb attacks. So it might seem like, oh, you just got to complete one of their health. No, there's a lot going on in this fight. Otherwise, you can easily lose 10, 15, 20 seconds from seemingly nothing. Yeah, the monkey positions make a big difference. Even how he delayed that second last hit in the previous phase, he waited for the monkey to come down, because if you don't, he would just run around the screen for like eight minutes before going to the next phase. Yeah, if you kill that one too quickly, he spawns again. It's obviously yeah, for another monkey to spawn. Yeah, so it's who you it's hit when you hit them out. and where all the monkeys are. There's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. It took a while to figure this, this all out, kind of collectively by a bunch of runners. And it was RNG Yeah, there's like no randomness in bosses anymore. Switch. They Don't fixed all the RNG. Man. Not only did they fix all the RNG, they also gave us the fastest RNG. Mm -hmm. For literally every, every single phase. I I don't know how intentional that was, but that's great. Thanks, Retro. I think they went to the ILs and just looked at them and decided on that, to be honest with you. Good way to do it. <laughs> see them basing it off of that saying you know what it's kind of silly that we have time attacks and rng potentially getting you from those time attacks because some of the bosses if they gave you certain attacks could definitely waste a lot of time so now here we are if you are a fan of the dk family we are going to see all sorts of DK family love here in World 4. The whole thing is going to be done with them. And that is primarily because of the boss fight and because Diddy's jetpack underwater saves a ton of time. Yeah, so here we are with Donkey. Um, by switching back and forth between the corkscrew and the bat and the breaststroke, uh, he is able to... Uh, you're basically able to refund each of those over and over again and go relatively fast. But now with Diddy, just constant boost forward. Very nice stuff. Funky Kong has the ability to do an infinite corkscrew underwater, unlike Donkey Kong, but it's the same speed as the other Kongs that are not Diddy. Yeah, Funky's uh, gimmick underwater is that he can also swim through these currents that are beginning to come up soon. And that's also what Dixie's ability is when you're playing with the uh, the family cons. But uh, he can't jump back, so where did he? Try to make a Dixie cycle. I did get hit earlier. Let's go! Okay, we got it. Huge! Nice! I got bogged Huge. earlier. And the barrel cycles in this game are based on when you start the level. So that Dixie Barrel's spinning right away. So I have to be pretty much perfect going through to catch that Dixie Cycle. Yeah, so see it again here, the currents with uh, Dixie's Hair Troll getting through them. Funky can do this and beat the level, but you don't get to use Diddy at the beginning. And that idea of Diddy jetpacking being faster just compounds through every level in this world. Yeah, it's so fast. <laughs> Secret exit, spooky. Nice. Yeah, if you haven't played this casually, uh, if you forget this secret exit, it's going to take a while to find. Yeah. Actually yeah. well hidden. Yeah, a lot of the secret exits, they didn't try too, too hard. That's probably the most well hidden secret exit in the game, and it's the most powerful one. So if you look here at the world map as Newbie goes into it, left side, that's the normal path through the level. Three levels over there two on the right side. We're going to go to these two instead, and this one far shorter than any of the three you do on the left side. So I think this secret exit in total saves like four minutes over doing the normal route. It's pretty crazy. And here we are in 4A. Um, I actually like this level quite a bit. It's the only one we're going to be seeing Dixie, Diddy, and Cranky all use. Dixie's a liability in the beginning, but then we swap to Diddy where we're going to, on that quick grab, utilize his jetpack under this first section of water, saving you a little bit of time. And if Nubius has a nice woohoo skip, yeah, I love that. Um, just coming out of the water at a specific angle. But if he stays on good cycles, then he can catch Cranky back there like he did, who also has that Pogo ability again in order for him to bounce off of all spiky enemies and whatnot. A little slower in the water, but now Cranky will be utilized in order to get into the secret exit here at the end of 4A, allowing him to stay on this fast track path through World 4 going into 4B. We're going to be going for a setup here, a couple of chain bounces off of these spike balls. Coming in, rolling oh so deep into a pogo. Chain bounce, chain bounce into the secret exit. Beautiful level right there by Not So Newbie. That was clean, man. Yeah. This doing all right. Yeah, well done. Doing pretty good. 
It is okay. That's a that's a beautiful 4A explanation, Spike. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> but now we go into oh. 4B, which 4A I love. 4B is one of those where it might just come off as, oh, it's a bunch of swimming. But uh, this is like maybe the hardest level in the game to optimize. Yeah, 4B is right, a ton of tech in it. it. Yeah, tons of tech. You uh, get hit by that guy? Did you get, oh, get, uh, get hit by that guy? <laughs> I forgot. You get hit by that guy? <laughs> I oh, forgot this was you. That's on me. Yeah, we don't play this one either. So let's this go, level go. doesn't have a pit. It's supposed to be this Metroidvania roguelike maze, you know? It's different every time. It's spooky, crazy. Everyone runs out of oxygen. It's terror. But, uh, yeah, we uh, skip it by getting hit three times. I found a visual cue uh, for optimal death here. There's uh -huh. a little starfish on the ground. So Ooh. you hit once, stay on the starfish, and you're good. You can go like, get a coffee Ooh. or whatever. Oh, that was bad. Yeah, that's all right. But yeah, probably the goofiest of the uh, the death cycles since we don't it's have access to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we have to take the damage. Three hits per DK every time. The good thing is uh, it's still faster than doing this level. <laughs> yeah, this level's very long. Yeah. And in the Wii U days, we did discover a clip to go out of bounds. Uh, and essentially skip the whole level, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, this level really pieces. changed. They actually put walls up <laughs> in the game, unfortunately. <laughs> we can't go through them anymore. We can't go through Diddy's wild ride, unfortunately. At least it's we're still just... going down the faster path here. And we'll be going into uh, another one of my favorite levels in the run, 4-5, Sea Stack Attack. Uh, uh, Goldfish, uh, I'll take the first part, but then can you tell us about the second and third parts of that level when we get to it? Um, oh, I know. Okay. I, I mean, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, sure, of course. Yeah, we got some. We got some fun parts coming. This is honestly, I think, just one of the coolest levels and one of the hardest to optim. Another one of the hardest just to nail in a given run. Not to put pressure on newbie. I'm sure he'll kill. No, it's hard I'd to optimize. It's like, Getting hit by this uh, speedy red top optimally is really difficult. Oh, you mean the next <laughs> level? Oh, my bad. <laughs> if oh, you do, okay. your Kong letters and puzzle pieces won't. Okay. <laughs> well, you get through the whole thing. I think four or five is probably one of my, probably one of the top two hardest levels. This isn't six five. Yeah, four or five is a really good level. It's just constant stuff happening. Whereas a lot of the levels, it's you do a cool trick, you roll, roll, roll a bunch, do a cool trick, roll, roll, roll a bunch. <laughs> it's a kind of just cool trick after cool trick over and over and over. Yeah. I'll take this first part here in Sea Stack Attack again. We're going to be on global cycles the whole level. So right off here off the bat, he's going to catch that bomb mid-air, throw it at a specific visual cue, and blow it up on the penguin, blowing up the wall as well. Fast enough to catch that cranky cycle. One second for each of those cycles, so had to be optimal all the way through the level. Chain those pogo bounces all the way up to this wall for the one breather of the level. Get rid of these bombs. Gonna pick up another one, smack this poker right here, shocking him, and then rolling through him through the wall. Golvish, tell me about the rest of the level. Yeah, so now he has to keep pogoing through these sections. He has a precise pogo here to skip this platform, then another one to skip the higher platform. Then he gets to jump through the right oh, side of the two banger. Where am I going? The right? Okay. Well, he was going to jump in the right Almost. side of the two banger. We took the quad knob this time. That's fine. Very nice. That was only like, that was not a bad recovery out of it, which is good. No, no, that was actually a really good recovery. You probably got Diddy on cycle time. still, though. The cycle seems like a loop, so it worked out. Yeah. Yeah, and then down here, uh, skip from the crates on the left side. Ooh. Always a little scary. As far as botched two bangers go, good recovery. I, I would always take that four or five in any run. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that was. Yeah, that can go totally much fun. worse. Because the, uh, the two banger, the two so. barrels on the left, they kind of just switch between them, so it's not really a big deal. But the uh, the quad knob on the right goes by, um, since there's four of them, it's not just clockwise each time. So you can get stuck in a barrel where you start pointing down, pointing right, pointing down, and you have to wait a really long time before you can actually exit it. Mm -hmm. Coconut with face on it? Sure. Noise. <laughs> and now here we are in four, six. Uh, okay, here's the swimming level we're actually doing, and it is another one that is very hard to optimize. Gonna be trying to spinning through each of these little uh, circles in the background. That's gonna unlock uh, areas and whatnot. So he's gonna try to be optimal with like cutting those spins early because jetpacking again underwater is still the faster way to move. So there's a lot of very specific angling. 
down two health right now is probably going to want to stop and make sure he gets this ditty barrel right here. Got to wait yeah, a few extra seconds. No, we're good. Uh, oh, no, we're actually, good. we're good. We're rolling deep. Uh, Watch this. Yeah, yeah, this level is yeah. similar to uh, the old DKC level, water levels, I find, where it's not so much about nailing big tricks, but it's just optimizing every little corner you can. Because even here, getting to that gear as fast as possible. Like, make sure you're already in the corkscrew when you get to it. And one more moment of reprieve right here. So he does have two health on Diddy Kong right now. So he can't afford one damage boost coming up later. If we're a yeah, little... We're yeah, I was about to say. Hello? I was going to say, you probably could have uh, before that, but... <laughs> No, that's good though, because now it means you don't even have to wait for it. Yeah. On uh, yeah, if you're playing on Wii U with without the extra hearts, uh, you're forced to wait for the Diddy Barrel there, or you're gonna lose him for this section. Mm -hmm. Funky Boat gives you a couple extra hearts as well, so that's good. Yeah, still really good recovery there in the first half. And now again, Diddy saves quite a bit of time in some of these underwater levels. Um, and now we're going to save even more time with Cranky Kong right here over Funky here on Boss 4. Goldfish, I, I would love to talk about Fugu, but I feel like you should talk about Fugu. <laughs> what a good fight, man. What a good fight. I'm not going to go into what he's supposed, like what Fugu normally is supposed to do. It's a really long boss fight with a bunch of mechanics. Yeah. But what you're able to do specifically with Cranky, his ability in water is to swat things with his little stick. But we can actually use that for the only like good spot in the run where you can sneak behind Fugu's backside and just ram him three times into the wall. So you'll see here, he goes into the edge, but he's also smacking Fugu specifically into the corner so that he shows his butt again. So those were three really good hits. If That's you knock nice him too, too far out of the corner there, he'll uh, slowly rotate back into the corner and then it messes up like your iframes and everything. So it's a lot harder to loop it. So we're gonna try to do that again on this left side here. Not great. Yeah, this isn't it's too easy. bad. Since it's on the third hit, you can refresh your uh, your iframes so won't mess you up. You can just wait in the corner. So this is still good. There's no issues here so far. And then three more on the left. Yeah, yeah that's good. Right away. Super, super clean. Yeah. The second was a bit off. It's just yeah, I pushed him away from the wall a bit, so he had to take time to kind of float back. Uh, but the third phase is identical, and I got the third phase, so he was he was uh vulnerable pretty quickly yeah the intended is to go through little bits of gameplay between each hit he'll shoot a like a purple enemy at you, you knock it back at him then he spins around in the middle you hit him again he ricochets off the walls a little bit sometimes he goes ultra fat and spins around but you're just blowing through the phases again it's super sweet that you can hit the bosses like pretty much at any time yeah yeah kind of a, a lot intended like actual blessing i like to always reference that i think the the gold time on the time attack for level is like two minutes. Newbie just did it in like 34 seconds. So to tell you just how much that breaks it. But now we go into World 5. We're back to Funky Kong for the rest of the run. Here we are in 5-1. Yeah, 5-1 I think is personally my favorite level. I got a lot of similar vibes to 4-5 where there's just a lot of stuff going on. Maybe not like right the second because you're mostly rolling. But starting after these barrel shots, there's a lot of cool little snippets of tech going on. Skipping this first little section is pretty cool. You don't have to wait for that. Coming up here, you're gonna let go of the vine. You bounce off the two prickly boys. That's a really big skip, specifically with Funky. Oh. After this cool chain, you get to skip oh. this the stack, you know? Stack. <laughs> then you have the trusty trolley. It worked out. It didn't work in the uh, last run you did. He was a little sus that time. Yeah. But he's trusty today. More little yeah. barrel sections. Here you have That's sweet dance boost to just, yeah, yeah, just to get through these claws. Yeah, skip through both of these uh, winding platform sections. Jumping up to avoid... Uh, well, normally yeah. jumping up. I don't think it makes a difference. Also, bouncing off this tuck here to set up going under the barrel to reach the end. Very nice. Like, that was just the, what, like six or seven, like, cool little snippets of tech? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's fun Double to do that, sweet. for sure. And it just looks cool. Yeah, I love that level. 5 two, another fun auto scroller. Yeah. Another tech filled stage. Tech. There's tons <laughs> of tech. This so was a level that made me think we should do death abuse. 
Beautiful. Golfish, you want to talk about what it, what this was like if you just rolled off the edge on the Wii U? Oh yeah, so you can see that he just rolls. And it doesn't go into the barrel. And you're good, and you die, and it works. On the Wii U, if you just roll, you're stuck in the barrel. It puts if you're you in stuck the in the barrel, barrel, you can't, like... Pits that aren't really pits anymore. They just turn into damage when you go on the bottom. So you're stuck until you take all the hits and die. It's... oh. Mm -hmm. So really, it's a quality of life improvement uh, to let us roll off the edge for this category. Yeah, this I, this has got to be the single death abuse that saves the most time, right? It's pretty fast. Yeah, I think it's faster than 1-4. One, four. Yeah, one, four this is you have to take all the hits. Like, you get a pit, and the level is a monster in length. Mm -hmm. I don't know, 5-3 is a pretty quick death abuse also, to be fair. It's almost yeah, at least as like as at least the time attack's not as long, right? Like that's true. you can personally speed up five three by playing. <laughs> you just play it. <laughs> Won't be saved until you replay. Okay. <laughs> okay, sorry. I'm trying to cut you off because I want to get that screen out as fast as possible. <laughs> so people yeah, don't come on saying like, anything. Man, this is possibly the worst performance we've ever seen on a GQ stage. This dude can't stop dying. Hey, What's no the game over fast count? So game over this. Game over this. Not even close. Yeah. 31 lives? Are you saving up? Did you save up for this night, not so newbie? I did. Here we are oh. in 5 3. Is <laughs> okay. This is one of like the only actually cool levels that we skip. I just, it's like Auto Scroller City that we're skipping for the most part. I like scroll, this level man. and I'm sad. But that's a good one. Yeah, but I, I, I like, like this level. Really you know yeah, that's a good one. I guess you there's slight effect for this. this one. Newbie, do no death abuse runs as well, and he'll play this level. This yeah, is the only one I'm sad we lose. That's literally it. Dang. I think until 6-4, this is the last death abuse anyway, for a while. So it's a lot of a lot of gameplay coming up. Sadly, I have to play more of the game. Okay. I'd say this is one of the trickier death abuse ones, though. Yeah, because you can't just roll into the pit. You actually have to jump. You actually have to jump, but you also have the um, at least for uh, some the first one. You have the freaking banana loading wheel in your face, so you can't really see one to jump. You don't. Know, yeah, I have visual cue with this vine in the foreground here. Oh, that's great. It's all about visual cues. DKS taught me not to the level and hit a slot machine barrel. A red mm, will appear. <laughs> Red. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how are you supposed to pronounce exclamation point, dude? I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I'm going to pronounce exclamation point that way for the rest of my life. A little red. Mm. 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 All right, so back to playing levels. We got five, four, panicky paddles. And again, to, here to the end of the run, there's one more. So it's mo we're mostly going to be playing stuff from here. Panicky paddles. This Two is more. a level I think if you yeah, do play as the DK family would save like one total second. Again, not worth the time, but it's okay because Funky Kong real fast. Going to get over that Omega Poker right there at the start of the level with the big bounce off the Farty Boys right there. They're just dropping gas left and right, getting over the other Omega. Nice double hover right underneath into the water bounces. We're going to ideally skip out on grabbing this vine right here, but Newbie grabbed wow. it for <laughs> the for the classicness of it. Off the other carter, dodging all the spike durians. Anyone ever had a durian? I'm sure they're nasty. Moving on up to this. I'm terrible at doing this. Let's see if Newbie can do it. Oh, ledge, ledge, keep oh, that speed. Ah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. I didn't see it. I, I kept still the speed. three seconds faster than what I did. Okay. Yeah, hell yeah. All right, here we've got a bunch of classic barrel blasting from Donkey Kong. We're going to blast. We're going to blast. We're going to wait. We're going to blast. Yeah, slight delay. Then hold down and right. That puts you in the angle you want. And then get to corkscrewing. This section is faster with Diddy, but only this section, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not worth the switch. And then we have to take a secret exit anyway, and Diddy's a little bit slow doing it. Not even mm. intended, so that makes it even slower. Yeah, the section yeah, coming up here is actually super sweet. This vertical yeah. part, instead of taking the platforms with the grab jump, you actually skip everything. Yeah. Like, le legit, none of those platforms were used. Just, uh, just go so up. Yeah, nice little delay right there, making sure. If that, that pit sends you back a good 45 seconds in level, so you don't want to see it. Here is the last secret exit of the run out of 5-4. Five, five, 
Let's go, because we're going to not Jelly Jamboree. Boo. Unfortunately. <laughs> See, that's what I'm sad about. I'm sad we missed the jellies, dude. World 5 is definitely the most unique world in this game. I love just the vibe of it, just like fruit juice and stuff everywhere. But it's definitely got the two most interesting levels altogether in Jelly Jamboree and Tropical Bees. Um, oh, yeah. Very good levels. We don't see them in any percent. If you want to see all levels, a lot of people have been doing that lately, uh, including Void. I know, Newbie, you've been putting in some time. Mm -hmm. Very good yeah, category. Right now. It's, uh, it's awesome to watch. And this is our third and final level that is on a global cycle to the music. So for a long time, it was a pretty casual thing. Uh, that you would just kind of wait on some of these cycles as we went through. But instead, if you just kind of make yourself go, uh, you can actually catch a little bit earlier cycle, I want to say. Yeah, I think we're hitting the classic cycle here, which is yeah, it's something I have fitting for the I theme, really but... Uh, uh, it is time capsules. So this is how we did that. Right, yeah, there. that's <laughs> the theme. <laughs> By the way, love all the new shows going on here on GDQ Hot Fixes between RNG and Mercy Kill. Uh, love Smooth Operative's show here of just having the time capsule, look back at different years and speed running, what came out those years. You know what is funny? Um, well, thank you very much. But also the funniest thing I find it, for this show in particular is that people always ask, is it live? <laughs> and yes, <laughs> it is live, everybody. <laughs> We yeah, recorded we're this today on October 29th, 2020. <laughs> like, so many people will think that this is a run from 2014, like, happening, and it is, it is 2020. Man, oh, man. I, I remember playing my Switch in 2014. What a, what a good console. <laughs> Man, 2014. Did this, is this game really six old, six years old? What happened? Yeah. Dude, we're so old. Yeah, Wait, I know, dude. What <laughs> oh, man. I was old when this game came out. What happened? I got to start asking the questions on, like, what are your fondest memories of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze? <laughs> So here we are in, I think, one of like the three coolest levels. I know we've been saying a lot of levels are cool, but this one's very cool. It's uh, one of the, no this one, yeah, I was about to say, it's got a lot of super cool, can I get the cool reference across anymore? Uh, ice physic, uh, con conservation all over the place. You'll see particularly, yeah, conservation. Just the Donkey Kong to net run you can do where you learn, run all the DKC games. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, you're going to see right here, he's going to duck real quick and then get to rolling. He's going to gain a lot of speed off of that. Like to just take the damage boost right there and then roll through here, bounce off, don't get oscillated. One more damage boost, a lot of speed through there. Love it, love to see it. One health left. Kenny, clutch it out. Bad. Oh, it's out there. Oh, you didn't mash the balloons. I didn't. <laughs> He's, do you feel confident at 18 lives or whatever you have right now? I think I'm all right. Hey, uh, you got to throw more eight more of those away. I have 25 lives. <laughs> you have so many lives. But yeah, I the ice floors in those levels cause a lot of shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Adding roll speed with ice physics speed for some reason is just strange, and you can conserve a lot of it. Uh, yeah, also the things that push you forward, those little springs and stuff. A lot of stuff in this game gives you momentum. It's really cool. We actually just found... Uh, some more momentum very recently, a couple months ago. On oh, really? Levels that, like, yeah. spin downward. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's like, you should watch yeah. the 6-7 uh, IL when you get a chance. Okay. Yeah, this is actually the one level with ice physics where uh, they speed up nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Literal nothing. So we got Bashmaster right here, the Coca-Cola bear. He's upset because we knocked his popsicle into the uh, into the drink and uh, the piranhas went for it. Um, for the most part, we just want to take damage so that we are, our surfboard is connecting with his noggin on like first frame possible. So that's why you're gonna see Newbie take a ton of damage all over the place to try to optimize that. It's not the most trivial thing. There's a lot of thought put into like standing right there. So like right as he turns into position, first frame, he's hitting it right there. So it's one of those where if you take it casually, you're only a few seconds slower, but it's nice to see that level of optimization thrown into the run. Yeah, sadly Bashmaster's not like the previous bosses where 
you can hit him pretty much any time. He has very specific moments where he allows you to hit him. That we know. Yeah, that we know of, that is true. Can't yeah, this is that. definitely the number one skip. If anybody wants like a tropical freeze bounty, go figure out how to Pompey this guy. Figure out how to just make his hitbox always active because he is definitely the longest level in the run. I believe even world record, he's a little over three minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple little setups where he drops these, these stacks of ice blocks. So on the third hit, we're just gonna like actually hit him. I'm gonna try and go to the far left and sliding left, and that'll set up two blocks on the left side. Hopefully. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Catch That's actually next really good. I didn't uh, know you could manip drop the. Uh, I didn't know you could manip the stacks of pipes though. Yeah, that's to a make the guarantee too. Yeah, that's super sweet. I always thought it was random whether you'd get the three or the two, so I never really trusted it. Also, Ooh, super good uh, Yo. bomb grab there. It's, it's soccer ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, already only two hits left in this phase, and we just got the last world to go here. And World Six is chock full of super super cool levels in this run, including definitely the the, the Oscar no nominated best picture of this run, 6-5. I'm looking forward to it. But for now, we got a bunch of levels we're we'll be going through. Hit number eight, and we'll be setting up for a one stack, a two stack, a three stack into a bomb. Again, correctly bongoing these ice cubes and getting the, the bombs out, uh, not the most trivial thing to do whatsoever. Yeah, you're breaking the ice, picking up the bomb while you're falling before you touch the ground and then throwing it. It's really easy to just mistime the grab and and then you miss the throw, there's more ice blocks, you miss it. Bash Master's in 14th phase, you don't know what's going on. You I lost your house. Like stopping full stop on the ice is tricky because you don't want to fall off. There's like actually quite a bit of little little stuff in there you have to Yeah, get. it's easy to mess up. Okay, Just like this level five. coming up. <laughs> God. Six ones. Wait. This level is like 50 seconds max and terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, unironically one of the shortest levels in the run, but also like especially with the DK family, I <laughs> I might have lost <laughs> many a run to uh to six one over the years, but that's okay because newbie's gonna kill it right now. Hell in the non-death of these fashion. So nice skipping over all these barrels, skipping out a lot of skips, and then at the right angle, Super shoot nice. that, wait, go that's there, close. skip over that pit, already on the at the first checkpoint, which I think is the scariest point in the level. We've got a lot more still to go. We're gonna skip out on this climb section right here. Nice grab oh. jump. Ooh, making us scared, making us pee our pants a little bit, but that's okay, because we got yeah, a new some, pair uh, of underwear. Yeah, he's Very doing nice. some cool moves here to yeah. skip even grabbing the vine in the first place. Dude, the I died here the other day, so I'm not doing it. Uh, no country <laughs> drop today, I respect it. Time capsule, classic strats. Right, we're time capsule. Yeah, just keep rolling to grab this vine earlier. And then right here, you're supposed to ride all these platforms down. We're just gonna roll off, jump, pray, bounce into the barrel. GG, newbie. Good, good, good. My barrel really shot good. at the beginning was very close. Yeah, you were right on the edge, the lip. I was right, yeah. that's optimal. It's IL worthy. Actually, you don't even do that in the IL. You need the banana slam. All right, 6-2 is... <laughs> 6-2 is good. There's a little bit of me like mental conservation in 6-2 as well. It's not really that noticeable, but it does save a couple seconds. Yeah, I want to see how far you take it. Probably not that far. You're going to go max distance? You're going to go classic strats before we knew it was a thing? Well, because it's a time capsule. Uh... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, so right here, newbie has a little bit more speed than usual. Well, he did. I Still, it's better than nothing. Jumping off of the... Uh, when you're rolling down a slope, jumping off of it gives you a bit of speed along with the roll afterwards. Good bops there. Yeah, good, good chain bounces. Yeah, Love skipping these vines here. Just going over that fish guy. Don't even, don't even mess with him. Don't even mess with him. Oh, that is weird. No, that way should be okay. 
Yeah, a little bit of a setup right there. Yeah, trying to make sure he didn't take damage there, but that's okay. Only a quarter of a second lost off, lost off of those. And then intentionally landing in the water because there's a breaking point, an invisible wall, where the game says, oh, you're closer to the right side platform. We're going to push you that way instead. So that was like intentional. He went over the third hoots. Very nicely done on 6-2. Yeah, good first, good first couple levels here. They can be scary, so that was all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, six. Yeah, World Six starts off with three of the shorter levels right here, all right around fifty to sixty seconds. Um, and kind of the theming of this world is each of these levels represents an entire world from Donkey Kong Country Returns. Something all three of us in this call have uh, run in the past. Um, we've all since moved on to Tropical Freeze, but Returns is still cool. Wait for the Returns uh, re-release on Switch. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to yeah, say the Return, return of Returns. Yeah. <laughs> and now you can actually maintain quite a bit of momentum off sliding down these ice physics right here. See how much Nubi's able to carry. Trying to get that double jump over it. Bounce off the hoops. Uh, double. Over. That was still pretty good, though. He kept the speed yeah. until uh, that funky barrel you saw. Just pretty good. You're able to keep it, like, all the way to this barrel. But, I mean, right. way more than nothing, right? Absolutely. Like, it's just like, overall, this run's been really good. I don't want, yeah. I don't want to sack you up before we get to 6-5. I'm just like, man, I, I don't think we'd already be here. All right, this this game's short as that. We're quick. This category is super quick. I love it. Yeah. Also, also right really here, cool. so the, yeah, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. You do it. Our, okay, we have a really cool skip here where instead of going on those platforms above, you kind of just go into the barrel hiding in the corner here. <laughs> Look in the background. Donkey no, Kong's holding up for you. Yay! <laughs> Oh. <laughs> that it's a weed. <laughs> hey, didn't you? <laughs> the classic it could be a gamepad. switch. Uh, you know, if you look at it, it's pixelated. It looks enough like a switch uh, head elbow. Uh. <laughs> Too good. Another nice auto scroller here. Yeah, and the last death abuse of the run, I believe. No, no, I'm no, but no, I'm not. Last, I made that. I meant the last auto scroller, though. That's true. Yes, so this is a yes, cool yes, one. This is, is similar to two six earlier, where he was riding the vines. Where we're gonna play part of the level to get an earlier, uh, to be able to get deaths faster afterwards. So you can see here, there's just a bunch of water instead of pits. So we're gonna play until the first checkpoint where there's a pit. That's a good one too. It's oh, it's such a oh, it's the best. Actually, really good. Yeah, you're on like a two-tile platform. You're you are set up. Yeah, I think this is a really cool level, like specifically in this category, because newbie's gonna have to take specifically two hits here before he gets the checkpoint, so that right after grabbing it, he can hit the platform that the checkpoint is uh, is uh, standing on instead of having to go all the way to the bottom. Where's he gonna take? Let's it? take it. Let's just do it. Yeah. That one. Oh, spooky. The weave section, let's go. Whew. Okay, let's try right. optimal. I'll watch this. Yeah, let's see how quick you can do this. Oh, Ooh, that was so, so good. clean. That was so good. It was like all yeah, the so pits. Now, uh, yeah, now seven pits to go. And we're done the last auto scroll. Oh, nice. I like the cute little double jump to not even touch the platform. Yeah, the other thing about. I think going higher is you fall faster. So like your your falling momentum goes. So there's no you don't ever have to touch the platform or anything. And it would be slower to go on the platform and like walk off or something or roll off because you're going straight down. Yeah, especially since you're uh, you're mashing the jump button anyway to pop that balloon as soon as you can. So you kind of exactly. just get the double jump anyway most of the time. Yeah, it's like the fastest frame balloon pop plus a little yeah. double jump right in there. Yeah, cool little option select there, you know. Yeah. True, any for say, exclusive tech. Exclusive tech. You'll never <laughs> see this category. Is sweet. I love this category so much. It's fun. It's it's pretty fun to do. It's quick, which I like too. Next to the level's name and time attack won't be playable. You did it. You got through oh, the whole thing. Oh, I finished it one early, man. Dang. Yeah. Oh, you didn't mash fast awesome. enough, dude. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. <laughs> yeah, I find silly categories like this to the epitome of speedrunning for me, where mm -hmm. it's just do whatever rash and nonsense you can to blitz through the game. <laughs> I was going to say, I this love that about speedrunning. This is such a good combination of playing through levels, like, oh yeah, it's a lot about movement. Yeah, there's sweet routes here and stuff like that. And then it's just like, yeah, this, we're just doing some nonsense for a minute. Yes. <laughs> just like... 
We do have a no nonsense or maybe max nonsense level, depending on how you look at it. We got six five. Starting off with an awesome double grab jump right there. And now we're going to be utilizing these platforms that we pound that will then shoot us off really fast, keep that momentum and get to going off the snowflake, another snowflake, keep it going, roll off another platform okay. all the way to the wheel. Hope you thought that was cool because that's the first of three big boosts we're going for right here. Oh, I made it. Yeah, I thought you were dead. Intentional, don't worry about it. <laughs> Uh-oh. No, it's okay. Oh, we're chaining together. Oh, yeah. Oh, the big hover, the big hover. It's all right, getting under the hot hoops. Not hot enough for us. I'm, I'm just gonna- Oh, uh, he'll wait, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, little baby boost right here. Off the big boy, off the little boy. Oh, oh into the big uh, gap. That's okay, fast. it means you get to another chance to shut off, right? You don't see those backups. This is this is 2014. Now we're at 2014. Yeah, you get to boost from here still, though, which is pretty nice. So even if you don't get, like, the full second boost, you still get a, a pretty oh, sweet no. backup. You will soon get another very sweet backup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll get it this time. I think the run was too good, that's why. This is actually such a throwback. I remember playing this level eight times in a row because I keep dying on specifically. <laughs> <laughs> now, the real BM is if you get asked if you want to skip this level. That would not be a good sign. But yeah, there we go, all the way into the second barrel. We got one more big one to go for. This one was found. Uh, little ways into the funky mode life cycle, and uh, yeah, it kind of revolutionized everything. If ideally we bounce off this guy, we grab this as soon as it sort of evens uh -oh. out, we're gonna try to chain over everything, and we're gonna be, yeah, I think we just gotta take it down. <laughs> That's right, this sets that, it up you can where try we can go again, for it right? again. Yeah, I can try it again. Yeah, oh, when I did this at GDQ Express, I literally died like eight times. I was like, I'm going for it till I get it. Can I try it again? We're gonna try absolutely can try it again. Yes. Yes. This is for your pride. Right. The other thing is the speed is variable a little bit on this thing. It's really hard to get a specific speed. That's oh yeah. Good. Super nice. Oh, oh, I'm loving it. Ba da ba 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 all the way to the wheel. We gotta see that again. Well, we got most of it. That's good. At least like nice. And I got a life out of it. You see? The game knows. Had to give him one of the four back. Yeah, six five, the hardest level in the run for sure. That's the best level. Yeah, like it's kind of not close. Yeah, you at least got all the boosts eventually, though. Mm -hmm. It's not like they didn't get to see it. It's true. Got to show it off. Six six, cliffside slide. Always had to see. This is the only silhouette level, base level we're going to be seeing in the run. Obviously, these games are these levels are super super pretty. Um, the whole uh, cliffside just crumbling apart right here. My run. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> dude, this was. Dude, dude, I died. The, the back half of World Six is so brutal. Here at the end of the run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess this. Uh... This is good to highlight how good the run was up until now. Right. Because all of those, like, it's so easy to just jump a fraction of a second too early and suddenly you're loading it again because you died. Mm -hmm. All right, now we got this beautiful section right here. It's going to go for a double at very specific points in the visual keys, bouncing off that spiked pillar right there. And now he's actually going to come out and take an intentional hit. It's a little faster just to get to that platform as soon as possible. Now double jump out, grab this one vine right here, bounce off the big boy hoots. That was good. good yeah, that was really well done. Yeah, section coming up here is also really cool. It's another climb section, but the level, the uh, platforms shift down when you land on specific platforms themselves. So Nubi's going to be jumping in very specific spots to be able to move forward. Yeah, land on the one so you can get to the hoots. Ignore those bobzos. So here, Nubi's gonna go left and grab up these vines. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I guess he died. Uh, where's the load in? Um, wow. So as it turns out, for whatever reason, this was found actually like I don't even. It was like it was like minute one. Someone just held like, right, and they were like, "What?" I mean, I'm convinced someone held right, and they didn't know. Um, yeah, there's a barrel down there that you're supposed to like climb the vines over to. We, the barrel's just always active there. It's actually, that's a lie. It's not always active. It's only active at first. 
So if you hold right, you fall into it, and you just have to wait till that platform gets out of the way. Then you can blast past everything and finish level a little faster. Now we go into 6-7, Frozen Frenzy. Should I give the super speed one well, one shot? It's pretty If you want to do it, man. Pretty unpracticed, but I If you do. think you have any chance of getting it, I see go I don't it. really. But what it'd be mean? cool if I I mean, you know, like, you know the theory, you know? You know the lore? All right, I'll go for one time. I'd go for it. I don't think, like, Spike's never seen it, so it really doesn't matter. I don't think I've seen it either. I only know, like, it exists. Yeah. Okay, I, I, see the yeah, I think it's a myth for both of us right now. Okay, let's see. Let's I'm see convinced you're lying. But let's see if okay. you're lying. <laughs> I hope you're lying. That'd be sick. Yeah, a lot was, of this. Uh, I gotta see. It, but it's cool. Tons of pits all over the place. It does these electrical cycles. What? Okay. Uh, no, nah, I didn't get any speed off it. No, that's all right. That, that's it. insane to me. That's even a concept. Like, yeah, to a lot of people, so wacky. A lot of people watching are probably like, what was that? And even Goldfish and I are like, oh, like we can kind of see what what they were going for. I want to see what that looks like. Oh my gosh, that little weird yeah, stopping and flipping of the platform. You got to watch the IL. It's great. I have a lot of work to do, obviously, on it. I have one heart. I got to intentionally die to be full now. Yeah, I think that's good. Because I can't do that. about that. That's tech. That's really good. Yeah, that's actually yeah. a smart Right one. at the checkpoint. Full respect. There's, there's a lot of places that I know that the pits after checkpoints. There is a lot of potential deaths here. Like, just where otherwise he would have just had to wait on a lot of these platforms so that he can just blast through everything. You can see he yeah, brought himself all the way down to one health in that last section. Just off damage boosting, yeah. That was really good. I'm yeah. impressed. I'm genuinely impressed, not just saying that. Wow, that was. Anyway, that's the yeah, concept. I'm adding that back up to the list. Mark and the other thing about that's really getting cool. that speed there actually despawns a bunch of enemies in the next section. It's really funny. There's no enemies in the next section. If you get the speed, it's very cool. I want to see. Is it about to say, is it the IL world record right now? It, yeah, DKS's record is like three, six seconds faster than the next one. Okay. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely check that out. And now, right, since hey, the first thing we're going to do is slap that and then uh, go up here. Oh, there he is. Get our boy Ronaldinho, you know? There he Heck is. Yeah, I'm glad he gets a little bit of showcase. Now, this entire level, we're going to get lots of rumbus, the hippopotamus action, and, and we got it. Yeah, he's good. He's just sitting there like, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Yeah, that's all the ram you see. Uh, Goodbye, Ronaldinho. Right we'll miss you. Once again, getting to the first checkpoint so that he's got a fresh place where he can die a lot faster, get those eight deaths pretty quickly. This is the last level in the run before the final boss, Frederick. It's actually a really good level to skip. You cannot skip Rambi in this level because there's a bunch of walls that for that you have to break with Rambi and then ice blocks you have to get through. It kind of forces you to use them. So it's really nice that we can just have a pit right next to a checkpoint and end it quick. Mm -hmm. The first checkpoint. Yeah. So yeah, I have a lot of extra it. lives. This is the last death abuse. This is it. The I'm gonna miss it. Level. I know. I I already missed the death abuse, Dave. Did so you good. jump in the fire a few more times? Sure. You do like one extra for the fans. Oh. No. Good effort. Oh, well, don't, be, don't be lying to me. That was the last one. I that mean, there is good. lava in the Frederick fight. That's true. Oh, we'll see we, what happens. We could see a throwback. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> Always willing to please the fans. During maybe the uh, the uh, the pee your pants RNG. Maybe we'll see. We'll see. But here we are. Volcano Dome. Sorry. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> well, wait, what? <laughs> Wait, wait, like wait. we're talking about you beefing it on Frederick. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> that is not I was like, that's, that's a fresh I, That is so not classic. That is that is not a time capsule moment right there. That is fresh 2020 tech bonking your head on the ceiling. Yeah. That, that may be the first time anyone has ever actually. Ever. I, I don't think anyone knew. That's nice to really throw. Let's go. You should make a tutorial about it. All right. So now we're going to go nine for nine. I always like to describe this fight as Bowser throws from Super Mario 64. It is an inherently simple thing you got to do, but it's with tight timing, and it's very easy to miss. 
uh, hit in his backside right here. Already three for three. He's going to be setting up on very specific parts of the platform to just jump straight up in the air and land on his backside. You try to go for his tailbone or the butt, it will not work. They'll just kind of wave right off of him. And if you're a little too far up, you'll get hit by the spikes instead. Now he's going to have to be dealing with that again in these later cycles, but Frederick is going to switch up speeds on him, and he'll be dealing with ice physics now on these platforms. And uh, Goldfish, you want to tell us a little bit about these early throws that Newbie already went one for one on? Oh god, early throws are so complicated. Well, Frederick's yeah. dancing in the background. You can sort him in it where he dances to, so you can throw the tucks before having to wait for him. So right now we're waiting for him to do his little belly laugh so you can hit him. You can actually, there's very specific setups so that you can throw the tuck in very specific spots to hit him while he's dancing around. Very tough though, it's easy for him to just, for Frederick to just jump the wrong way and it's all over. Really good 6 for 6 by the way. Yeah, yeah 6 for 6. Second. The second cycle can be the hardest one that you have to deal with there because he actually, the first cycle, it's all slow. The third cycle, all three of his hits, his movement speed will be fast. That one goes slow, mid, fast. So you have to switch that up, have different visual cues for where you jump at and deal with the ice physics. And if you miss any of the first six hits, it's an entire extra cycle here, which is about a minute time loss, which is absolutely terrifying if you're on good pace at the end of a run. Say, if I miss one of these, then the run's over, just realistically. So now we're setting up for our last three hits. One more early throw we're going to try to go for. Yeah, we're kind of trying to weave to the left a little bit to hit him, I think. Uh, I don't think we're going to. That's all right. Good jumps, though. He's, he's got the first one he to the very edge. Yeah, yeah one of three is pretty good. Yeah, yeah so right. three fast hits here. Also, time coming up. Yeah, on the uh, on the punch, not the final hit. Oh! Never oh, mind, it's, uh, in two oh, minutes. Oh. <laughs> now, so what's actually nice about missing this cycle, at least on the end, it is that it's actually about a 25 second time loss as opposed to a minute because he's instead going to stay here with you and shoot these uh, icicle dragons at you. Now, if he misses another cycle, which he only has to hit two of them, then it's another minute. Yeah, so two hits to go. Right. All right. So, and, and time. 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 Nice, still really good. Nice. Uh, sweet. And we were worried about uh, the estimate. <laughs> I don't want to know my time. Oh, it's true. sub 123. Uh, the timer stopped a little bit late, but uh, I have 121.21. All right, that's hey, good. Hey, oh, beautiful yeah. time. That's a great <laughs> marathon time. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Right. 24 for reference. I've been maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're just really good. Too, so yeah, it was bad. a very nice run. You were, yeah, was, I don't know, it seemed like you were on world record pace for a couple of times because people kept commenting. Uh, I, I, I think I was know. before 6.5, actually. It was really was great. Close. My PB uh, is only like 20-something seconds behind world record, so. Oh, nice, nice. It's very possible to get there. Well, that was really an awesome run, Newbie. Thank you so much for showing off those sweet uh, 2014, 2020 strats. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, do you have anything that you'd like to add? Any shout outs, anything you'd like to say? Uh, yeah, show us the community. This is all community. Uh, tons of work was put into this game. Um, tons of strats discovered by everybody and a lot of cooperative, cooperative stuff. Uh, so it's really good to see the run come together, which is nice. Also shout outs to J-Hobbs for helping me set this tech up. <laughs> nice, my dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, act yeah, actually, Newbie got a new computer for this run, so shout outs to that. <laughs> I mean, also for my stream. Also, I have a stream schedule now. So if oh, nice. Ooh, when do you what? stream, my dude? What is yeah, it? Plug it. Yeah, uh, Tuesday afternoons, Thursday evenings, and Sunday afternoons. I'll be posting it as well. Perfect. Well, if you... Stuff, yeah. If you enjoyed this run, everybody, please make sure you follow our runner, Not So Newbie, here on Twitch, uh, as well as our commentators, Michael underscore Goldfish and Spike Vegeta. I appreciate y'all being here. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you for having us. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks a for, lot. For sure. Newbie course... runs a lot of tropical freeze categories, including uh, this category, any percent, all levels, and no levels. If you want to know what all that means, make sure to give them a follow. So, oh, yeah. Definitely. Well, thanks again, everybody. A uh, big thank you to our current subscribers. Uh, 
your subscription directly supports this show and other Hotfix shows. You can learn about all the shows at gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. And if you missed any or want to revisit past events, go to youtube.com slash gamesdonequick to check out the VODs. This Thursday, uh, the first step will end Season 4 with The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past at 7 p.m. Eastern. Come see if Hobbs can break Key's winning streak before the end of the season. Um, <laughs> but that concludes tonight's episode of Time Capsule. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Smooth Operative signing off. Take care of yourselves and each other, and we will see you next time.